to the entire end of the session. So they're like, alright guys, thanks for playing, and I'm gonna go ahead and upload this to YouTube, and then would have went to look for the end stream button, and it would have been like completely just green, and I would have been like, no! Alright guys, you have to come back, we have to re-record the episode. No, no, it's not about recording, it's about making sure we have like archives for reviewing for Hope you, hope That's you remembered your great Dear Maria Count Me In joke, John. <laughs> 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 All right, no missed memes on the speed run. <laughs> we climb up hole. We take thing. That's all that's happened so far. <laughs> yeah, I'm sad that I didn't. I guess the recap is more for y'all than anything. It's not like a watch back won't have the uh, old episodes, but yeah, it's just it's just well, nice. Well, to... hello. Well, when we get big, that's when we're putting in the the video montage. Of course, of course. No, it's not about getting big. It's not about getting an audience. It's just, I really My like it. My goal is to blow up and then <laughs> act like I don't know <laughs> nobody. <laughs> yep. You're right, Tyler. It's not about getting big. It's just about getting rich. <laughs> it's, a, it's mostly about getting girthy. <laughs> Bro. It's not, no. about, it's, man, it's not it's... about the size of the wave. It's the motion of the ocean. Yeah, man. <laughs> Oh god, no, I just, I really like having something to go and listen back to. Sometimes I'll, like, go back and listen to the shit y'all did in Dragon Heist, and it just makes me so goddamn happy, like you wouldn't even believe. Sometimes I go back and listen to us ranting about Five Guys and making Josh just so angry. <laughs> it fills me with such light and love. That um, was almost a friendship-ending night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, if, if the... <laughs> I'm trying to wonder, like, what is the angriest any of us have ever been as a dm during this group and there were some bangers there were some bangers back the real answer is uh um there were some real no it's definitely rooftop handjob well, rooftop... i was gonna say the real answer was ravnica but yeah rooftop handjob was rough i i was i was getting really really kind of upset near the end of candlestick believe it or not um but that was oh, just, really? Well, it was because um, there was like... You a, were in too deep and didn't know how to deal with our fuckery because no, at no, that no, no, point, no, no, no. You, you, can, you can either retcon uh -huh. or just the, let us keep going. No, no. Well, was, the thing is that was it was... Too deep. It, it was fine was for y'all, but deep. like, I, I wasn't good at... um Emily, you're not on Foundry on my screen if you still have to load in or not. Um, no, I'm on. I'm in Foundry. Okay, weird. Okay. Instead of going under. I am um, here. Do you want me to, to move? I can move. Okay, yeah, I believe you. I just It doesn't show you, so that's why I was like, what the fuck? But it's fine. Um, I am here. No, uh, the thing with the end of... I shouldn't say this on stream, but uh, fucking whatever. We, we explained everything, so it's fine. But um, yeah, at the end of it, it was... I, I, I wasn't good at balancing things, and so... <sighs> My last couple of fights, you know, we were all level 18 to 20, so I knew nothing except for make boss fights. Because it's hard to balance trash fights for 5th edition at the later levels. Um, so, whenever... Anti magic feel. Yeah, well, like, okay, fucking Jermong versus, um, oh crap, uh, the, the, the big guy, uh, fucking Nick's character, was really, was really fun. That was a, that was a really close fight, and that was super awesome. Lufir uh, versus Degra wasn't as close of a fight. Lufir was a lot um, luckier and also less directly countered by Degra. Um, but just, like, how Rugnar, like, didn't even, like, engage with the big fight that I designed with Fanshir just kind of really bummed me out, and that put me in, like, a bad mood for pretty much the rest of the night for that uh, session. Uh, then we got to the Syric fight, and I really enjoyed the Syric fight, so it, it, it all worked out, I guess. None of you made me angry during Theros, but I was just filled with despair when there was that, like, a long series of dick jokes, and I was like, okay, okay, okay. And then the next words in my mouth are fucking, the roads are paved with bone. <laughs> yeah, I remember oh, that. no. I remember that. Oh, so vividly, Back. yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's possibly some of the hardest laughing I've done in this entire session. What I really need to do is go back and listen to the to the Christmas session because... Um, oh, in, in the, oh, in the, oh, Kevin and Kevin oh, and oh. Jim Carrey and yeah. Oh, in so, like the first two minutes, uh, like five minutes of the thing, and we had Bigo to Babada, and like all of us just immediately die on the spot. How do you stay <laughs> in role play mode he, when your friend just said that to you? He committed so hard, and he uh, uh, of 
of all that I've played so far, that's that's the most solid role playing our, moment. <laughs> our our new template, uh, Theros Theros boys are definitely all uh, knows about sex, does not fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was really proud of the Icewind Dale one. I feel the Icewind Dale one was really on point. Good. Uh, anyway, so Christmas one, Kevin knows fuck does fuck. Kevin the boy. Yeah, my... Kevin also, the also Kevin <laughs> knows, knows fuck does not fuck. Shim Carey does not know and does not. My favorite one is always is does not know what fuck is but fucks, and I'm like, okay, that's got to be like an abusive situation, right? No, like in I what know. situation can you I do see that? It. I see it more as like they, they do it, they just don't know what the fuck they're doing. No, it's like the episode they're... of uh, Dragon Ball Super where uh, <laughs> yeah. Goku had never kissed his wife. <laughs> yeah, Goku never kissed his wife. <laughs> Chi Chi, what the fuck? Look, she got that dick. That's all she was there for. I, guess. I don't know. <laughs> but Chi Chi, you were married. <laughs> Look, she knew what her Chi Chi was. You have before, multiple children with him. That's actually the exact words that Vegeta says. You yeah. have multiple. <laughs> Alrighty, so, if I may, as you walk into the next room, uh, Ninny and, uh, I believe Getz is under her, um, on the thing. It'd be really funny if Get if Ninny was just riding on Getz's shoulders. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we... Oh, and all I, all I was gonna say was, blah, 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 hey guys, downstairs there was, like, that blank space where there was, like, a portrait or mirror hung before. Maybe we can throw one of these up on there and something happens, I don't know. In the next room that Ninny is currently looking into, two gaping holes, <clears throat> two gaping holes in the peaked roof expose this attic to the. Oh wait, fuck! Hang on, bitch. That was the three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Um, hang on. Ah, I did it out of order. So, like, technically, you guys are going backwards through the numbers, so it kind of threw me off. Wow. So the last description I gave was that, but let's just say you can Where's see the scope. Mm, no, actually, it's a. Uh, it's actually, <sighs> believe it or not, it kind of starts the exact same. So let's see, you are currently, I have to say it out loud so I don't fucking confuse myself, C-16. Two gaping holes in the peaked roof expose this attic to the elements. Shattered clay roof tiles, splinters of wood, dry leaves, and bird droppings cover the floor, which has begun to rot in a number of places. The rafters are home to several birds, uh, bird's nests formed out of twigs and straw. Two wooden bed frames stand against the north wall. Built into the window box between them is a wooden storage trunk, sealed with a rusty padlock. Other furnishings in the room include a pair of tall, narrow wardrobes. I'm gonna try to pick that lock. Alrighty. Um, you have a uh, thieves tools. Uh, am I playing a rogue? No, I am not. So probably not. No, if you do not have, uh, so uh, this is how I do it. Uh, but if you don't, I'm have gonna war pick that lock. If you would like to war pick no, the no, lock, no, it no, 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 no. Collateral's gonna like. Hurriedly, not spread, but she's like trying to dance over the bird drop. It's like, no, 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 leave that. No, 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 oh, oh, no, no. <clears throat> Allow me. I'm gonna pick the lock. <laughs> she's not wrong. Nanny, we've talked about My... this before. That's not what that means. <laughs> My dear, I know your heart's in the right place, but I'm I'm afraid that whatever's in there might be hopelessly broken if uh, if you do that. Uh, so I don't have it on my sheet here in the thing, but I mean, I do have proficiency with, and I do have thieves tools. Okay, That's are you proficient what, what... in any dex thing? Or just roll me a dex anything, like sleight of hand and just add your proficiency to it. Which I believe is a three at the moment. Oh yeah, um, it's not a, it's not a hard lock to get through at all. Um, it's kind of rusted and you actually like kind of break it but in a way that it opens um uh perfectly leaving it open um so as you take it open excuse me um it only contains one item and it appears to be a six inch tall sculpture it depicts a sort of a demonic looking entity a muscular uh, ox looking biped that has two stone uh, leathery looking wings with a mace in one hand and a bouquet of severed heads in the left 
Oh my, who's this handsome fellow? And I'm picking that motherfucker up. You can go ahead and uh, make me a, a religion check if you would like to. I thought you were going to make... It's going to be con save. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it was going to be save, and I'm like, oh, fuck, well, here Your was wisdom the save. Well, that's next. Wisdom would be fine. Con would be, I'm dead. Hmm. Yeah, um, me too, bud. So, you recognize this as a depiction of the evil god Orcus. Ooh, um, boy. Oh, god, really? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and uh, link a, uh image of the statue. That is what it looks like in can uh, campaign images. Um, yes, um, it is outwardly, um... That's a friendly Orcus, though. Yeah, it's, um, as you look at it and you kind of, like, inspect it, you realize it smells kind of bad. It smells like rotting flesh, and it is a noticeable smell. Oh. Mm. Carved from an ogre's petrified heart. Oh, wow, it's carved from an ogre's petrified heart. That's metal as fuck, dude. Yeah. Uh, I guess you know that now. Undeath and ghastly de the demon. Okay, so carved from an ogre's petrified heart, the gray figurine depicts the demon's prince of undeath in ghastly detail, clutching his skull-topped wand in one hand and three severed heads by hair in the other. The figurine smells like decaying flesh, and the scent is detectable out to a range of five feet. Oh, that's <clears throat> that's really uh, stinky. Very interesting. Uh, might might be able to sell that, but. Uh... Ooh, would, would someone else like to hold on to that for now, maybe? Not particularly, mm, no. I want to... Let's throw out a detect magic on that. I'm, oh, in the save time, I'm I'm going to just cast... I'm just going to use a slot. I'm not going to ritual cast it for the sake of time. Fire. Okay. Oh, fuck. Yeah, no shit. That was going. We we a bunga. All right. Um, with detect magic, um, not only do you detect that this thing is magical, you detect that it has been desecrated. Hmm. That seems bad. What school of magic are we talking? Um, definitely necromancy. Okay, that's what I was thinking, but making oh, sure. Now that you have that, um, all of you can make me perception checks as well if you would like to. Well, I would like to, since you're saying we should. <laughs> You're gonna make me open my character sheet. How dare you? Give yourself proficiencies, by the way, you dumbass. Oh, you know what? Oh, damn! No. Ninny is on it today! What if I told you I don't know how to do that because you moved us to a new system? Okay, so system. if you click in, so if you click in these little circles, um, you can click them t uh, to. They go through several stages. There's the check mark, which means proficient. There's the half moon, which means you're half proficient, like a bard. Or you click it one more time, and it's double check uh, check mark, which means you have expertise in it. All right. Well, let me open roll twenty. Oh, what's that? I have expertise in everything. Oh, well. You didn't that. give him proficiencies in roll twenty either. Fuck. <laughs> you little well, bitch. You know what? <laughs> and I don't remember what your background was, but I believe you were a sage, so do with that as you will. Um, Ninny, as you kind of uh, are watching them look at this statue, uh, you hear a soft whispering from behind you. Um, Arctos also hears this, uh, which is fitting because of where you guys are situated. Uh, but Ninny, you hear a voice, and it says, Are you like me? Are you small? Why are you here? And then he turns around and says, What? I'm small. And as you turn around, this ghostly figure appears <clears throat> floating just about eye level with you. And it speaks to you and says, What is your name? Nanny? Nanny, stop, stop answering the ghost. Why? This is how they get you. <laughs> my name is Sylphine. This is my house. It used to be my house. When? <clears throat> I don't know. It feels like it's been forever. Well, that's very lovely, Sylphine, but we really need to go. Uh, thank you for, for coming to see us. Uh, if you could just show us the exit. I'm afraid you can't leave this place. <laughs> Yeah, so this is why we don't talk to the ghosts, yeah, Minnie. Yeah, right. uh, <laughs> it's not me keeping you here. It's the Batman. 
No. <laughs> Who's the bad man? Is it the guys in all the paintings? Or is it the guy that's... That was in the other painting that was locked? Collateral will hold up the... Orcus action figure. Like, is it this bad guy? She visibly recoils as you um, hold up the Orcus thing. She's like, put it away! Put it away! I don't want to see it anymore! Put it away! Put it away! It's upset. Well, I will uh, oblige the ghost. But I'll say, what's, what's the matter with it? I know it's not pretty and it certainly doesn't smell good, but... It keeps me here. It keeps us bound to the bad man in the crypt. It's just outside of the house, down the road. You need crypt, that you to say. <clears throat> you need the statue to get into it. The bad man is there somewhere. If he's gone, then the way back should be there for you. I haven't found a bad man yet, so... Yes, but we'll see if he's there later. If you go down the road, you'll be lost in the mists, but there's another way. There's a shortcut. This place is full of them. <clears throat> yeah, like the hole in the floor we climbed through? That's a shortcut. This shortcut is different. There's a graveyard outside of the house. And the one with my name on it is a gate. All you have to do is dig it up and lay in the hole. Good. You want me to go lay in an open grave? Yeah, this is why we don't talk to the ghosts! I'm sorry if it sounds scary. No. What is your name, dear? I said, my name is Sylphine. Oh yeah. That's that's Brandon, that's not collateral. <laughs> I understand, I understand. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see Sylphine, but she's over here. Oh, yeah. no, She will yeah. float around and uh, kind of... She definitely yeah, doesn't. She definitely doesn't know. hold the shape of like any noticeable humanoid figure. Uh, like she has the size of a small girl, but she looks like this vague mass of just skull and phantasmal energy. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna go into your grave, but uh, we'll keep it in mind if all the other ones aren't working. I just, I don't know. You know, if the doors are out of order or something. Yeah, we might want to have a word with your house guests downstairs they uh that bad man might be the one that they're looking to get rid of too you must not go into the mists you'll be lost forever or you'll be picked up by the king in his castle oh the count you mean oh count. god god and, and she'll say the name king of the castle <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you that say, is, do that you say mean Uh yeah, yeah, and you say Strahd's name out loud and says, well, Yeah, he, I fucking do. He doesn't I don't even know. As you say it, um, as you say Strahd von Zarevich, the shutters and the walls of the room that you're in kind of shudder slightly. Um, and she says, He doesn't want me here. He doesn't want the bad man oh. here either. But we're trapped here together. Well, I suppose that once he's gone, you are free to leave as well, yeah? I think so. I hope so. I want to see my sister again and my puppy. Okay. Well, we'll do our best. Uh, I mean, short of laying in your grave, because I don't... I, that's kind of weird. It's okay. I gotta, pull up, my, I it's gotta okay. pull up my wand and press to digitation like a little fireworks show in the shape of a puppy. Aww. She kind of like, her, the lights around her kind of, fl uh, they kind of flare to life a little more than they were, but she mostly keeps a, she she seems to be a very like grim kind of dour figure. It's well, she's like a she's dead good. child, so yes. it's fair. Um, you don't say. And she says, <laughs> it's okay. I'm not there anymore. Why not? I was taken a long time ago. Well, she is dead, so like you know. Well, we'll no... uh, we'll be we'll be stepping out of the room here now. Uh... Who takes a child skeleton? Presumably a bad man. But it, 
Yeah, the people are weird around here. I think we just need to go. Oh, you know what? Um, Arctos, um... Uh, roll, womp, me a, womp. Roll, roll me a d20, buddy. Oh no, how do I do that here? Just <laughs> uh, slash r d20. Same, same as usual. Let's see. That's, that couldn't possibly be good. Um, no, it's, um... Let's see here. It's like, it's fine. They're fine. Um, uh, no, uh, as, you, as, like, this girl's floating around and stuff, as she gets, like, nearer to you, you feel your magic react in a strange kind of way. Uh, you feel it kind of welling up in you. Not like you're gonna cast a spell, or, uh, excuse me, or have a wild surge or anything, but, like, you, you do feel, like, static on your, uh, on your arms like your hair stands up on end you get goosebumps and the smell emanating from the orcus figurine seems a little worse oh goodness that's not good um you do uh. actually hear a voice in your head and uh you hear so late like uh, that woke me up from my nap uh, is something wrong did you get shocked or something uh no there's a a ghost uh it, it... That was weird, huh? I felt it, but I don't know what it was. Do we oh. notice the smell getting worse? Nope, it's just Arctos that this happens Well, to. uh, Collateral still thinks it's getting worse, so she's just gonna mage hand the thing perpetually, just to sustain it, to keep it, you know, <laughs> downwind. As your mage hand appears, um, it looks different than it normally does. It appears as a skeletal hand, as opposed to just a vague, normal hand. Hmm, well, I suppose we are in Shadowfell now, aren't we? Mm -hmm. You're in a domain of dread, baby. Yeah. Which, again, are fucking rad. <laughs> I I kind of took some liberties with this one, uh, just to make it more interesting, and I hope it paid off. Well, we don't know the difference yet, so... <laughs> okay, well, uh... You can do bye. whatever you want, but... I think it's the only way out. Goodbye. I'll be here if you want to call me again. Okay, bye-bye. As you try to open that door, it appears to be locked. Collateral. You can you can stop that now. <laughs> bye. Uh, I'm going to pull out the thieves' tools. Alrighty. The thing. Uh, yeah, roll me a, uh, the same check as before. I think um you can add, like... I think you can add them to your inventory and roll them from there. Like, if you have thieves' tools in your... Um, nope, not like that. <laughs> so, watch this. If you click on Thieves' Tools under your tools, it'll roll it like that, and I'll let you keep the 19. Oh! So, um, yeah, you, um, you're able to unlock this door, and it appears to lead into a spiral staircase down to the second floor. Okay. All right, well, down we go. All right. Before we start oh. guess about the bad man. I'm going to guess. plop all of y'all um, one by one. The only uh, disadvantage about how these um, whoops, it's right here. The only disadvantage about how these maps work is that whenever I instead of like warping you from floor to floor, um, it's uh, it's me dragging you across a map. So you know, kind of all the weaknesses that that entails. Uh, Gets, are you going down the stairway? Or are you just gonna? <laughs> I'm trying try to grab yeah, you. I'm just and sticking like, around. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like sticking and moving, and I can't grab you. Alrighty. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna call out for our friends, like, hello? Um, and the were-raven that is in this room, uh, notices you, uh, guy's coming back and is like, Ah, hello, did you find anything of note upstairs? Unfortunately, yes. I'm sorry to hear that. What was it? It's the ghost. Uh, I'll gesture to the floating orcus figurine. Hey, what are you in there, you fuckers? That is well, a... yeah, there's also that, but there was a ghost, and she was nice, and she... It's weird. Lay, lay in a grave, Ninny. Uh, let's. Uh, yeah, I, but she was nice. Let's go one at a time here. Uh, that's a figure that looks like a foul piece of work. But that Orcus. Ah, that is unfortunate. But the creature we are looking for happens to be a spawn of Orcus. This works out quite well, I think. Well, that bad man the ghost told us about might well be your man. Yeah, ghost didn't like it either. I see. 
Well. She also said her grave is empty. I don't like that one. Hmm. That is also worrying to hear. I did find this, however. Um... And he, uh, he digs out a little, uh, it looks like a journal. Um, and he says, I believe this belonged to the lady of the house. Um, let me find where it's at. Sorry, sorry. Um, um, and he hands this to you, Getz. Uh, this appears to be, uh, yeah, it is a leather-covered journal with a stylized wolf's head on the front cover. Uh, the inside cover lets you know that it belongs to Baron Brantifax's wife, uh, who does not have a name. This is Baron Brantifax's wife, oh, I guess. Oh, yikes. Um, yeah. And Baron contains... Hawashi. Yeah. Baroness Brantifax, I yeah, guess. Yeah, really. Um, in it, she I don't think he cared who his wife's name was either. <laughs> What's your name? So much... I, I never had one. <laughs> Oh, woman so much for the tolerant left in, my awesome. in it she just uh, so let's see it contains her delicate handwriting in it she describes her visits to the chalet which she hated Jesus. and the tribulations of her daughters whom she adored any character who spends an hour reading the journal and was a following uh, I, I read the quiet part out loud uh, so it seems that Baron Brantifax was an avid hunter and often invited guests to the chalet to hunt with him the Baroness admired his generous nature and his vigor uh, the Baron loved his trusty mastiff Br uh, Brorn as much as he did his wife and children. The Baroness disliked it when the Baron fed the hounds scraps from the dinner table. Uh, the Baroness felt too isolated at the chalet. She much preferred the trappings of civilization and city life. Sylphine, the couple's firstborn daughter, was bedridden, having been born with terrible physical deformities. The Baroness was glad that Sylphine could be housed in the chalet to keep her far from the public eye. A nursemaid was hired to watch over the child while the Baroness was away. The Baroness described Sylphine's death at the age of six as merciful, and there's some indication that she had never gotten quite over it. Heluth, the younger daughter of the Baron and the Baroness, was a tomboy, more like her father than her mother. Heluth was slain on her ninth birthday, killed by a wolf while out hunting, on, uh, hunting with her father. The Baroness doesn't blame her husband for Heluth's death, but neither does she absolve him of the guilt. Both daughters were buried in the chalet's graveyard at the Baron's insistence. In her final journal entry, the Baroness speaks of whispers in the graveyard and makes plans to leave Chalet Brantifax with Sylphine in tow. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that worked out real well, huh? So the whispering started before Sylphine even died. Um, it's it, those the entries talking about the whispers um, came after Sylphine died. It appears. Okay, so she was going to dig Sylphine up. That's somehow not better. No. <laughs> I mean, it's your choice, I guess. But like, her ghostie is here, so something happened. The Were Raven says, "I think that this." Uh, cast light on the sad tale that happened here. Maybe a deal was struck with uh, Orcus. Perhaps. It's a foul idol. Ugh. Yeah, no, it smells quite yes. rank. I don't Look, think that's what... You know what? Don't worry about it. You said something about a grave and lying in one? Yeah, a little girl ghost. She said that, like, a shortcut to get out of here is to to dig up her grave and then lie in it. Yes, she also said something about the mists and not to enter them. Do you know anything about that? Um, to clarify, she said that uh, lying in her grave was a shortcut to the uh, the crypt where the bad man, the supposed the white, lives. Um, um, and as you ask that question in collateral, uh, he says, "Yes, there are ever prevalent mists surrounding all of Barovia and." Those who walk into them risk either being lost forever or falling under the purview of the Count. Both of which are very unfortunate fates. You would do well not to walk into them. Under the Collateral will go, ah, Count Straw. <laughs> and as you say his name, the, sh uh, the shutters in the room and the walls rattle. Dust starts to fall from, like, the rafters. And he says, don't speak his name out loud. You're only inviting him. And that's more than we need to deal with. Is he a unjust ruler? 
That is not for me to say in his domain of rulership. Again, that is inviting far greater powers than I am capable of handling. Let us attend to what we can do for now. You said that... <laughs> you said that the graveyard is a shortcut to the mausoleum, yes? Or at least the ghost said as much, yes? Yeah. I am inclined to believe her because it is the only lead we have uncovered in this well, place. We have to go lie in the grass next to the mausoleum. If it makes you feel better, I will do the deed first and you can follow along. I do not believe that I will be able to slay the creature by myself, but uh, perhaps the five of us working together can do so. My compatriots... Your... Uh, uh, go ahead. My compatriots will stay behind to ensure that if we fail, someone will live to tell the tale. Nice rhyme. Thank you. I Moonlight is a poet. <laughs> In here, and what I didn't even, even know it. <laughs> I mean, look at this dude. He looks like a fucking beat poet. That's the guy who shows up on open mic night and tells you the shittiest poetry with a blank face. <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe looking ass. The street uh, and my eyes are wet. And it just hits a bongo. So where yeah, was the, kind of like, huh? the thing that had like a mirror or a portrait hanging there previously? Yada yada yada. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, that is an excellent question. Uh, one that I will get to you in just a second once I figure out the answer to that. Uh, nah, nah, nah. I believe... Let's see here. Uh, fuck me, I do not remember where that was. Um, <laughs> magic puzzle, magic puzzle. Want to solve the magic puzzle by putting the portrait back where it came from? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, 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 I legit like you caught me in a, you caught me in a fucking uh, a blank here. Um, oh, that was in the study. There was um, the study down here in yeah with the rope. Um, and as you put the mirror back in the uh, place where one obviously could be hanging, uh, nothing happens. Cool. I was actually going to start with the portrait, the, the, the family portrait thing. And nothing happens. Okay, I'm going to cycle through every single portrait. Nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens. Gay, well, I guess the bright side is, uh, that's 250 gold. It's not <laughs> yeah. going to suddenly disappear. I should have written something for that effect, but oh well. It, it was a good idea. I will make if you my... saw a pattern, it could have been a puzzle. No, I, I, I probably should have held on to the Orcus figurine until you did that, but here we are. Um, so yeah, the Were-Raven guy, whose name is... You just, you just hear collateral in the other room going, son of a bitch. <laughs> Walks out. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, the, 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 the. What is his name? His name is Taspar. T-A-S-P-A-R. Taskbar. Casper? <laughs> So anyway, he says, uh, I will transform and meet you in the graveyard. Luck be with us. This will be over soon enough. And then he um, hops onto one of the windows and jumps out of it. But mid-jump, he turns into a raven and then flies towards the graveyard on the outside of the uh, the grounds. I thought you were going to say we would hear a sickening crack. <laughs> uh, you hear a thud and he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, guys, your friend is fucking dead. Alrighty. Would you guys like to go to the uh, graveyard? Would I like yeah. to? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Are we going to? Yeah, probably. Let's start dragging. Yeehaw. Dragging these nuts. <laughs> so as you um, get to the graveyard, uh, you see four headstones. Uh, from left to right, they read, Baron Brantifax, husband, father, hunter, let no man stand above another. Brorn, hound of Brantifax, faithful to the end. Haluth, our pride and joy lost too soon. Sylphine, beloved daughter, may she find peace at last. The earth is notably not as compact on Sylphine's uh, grave as the other ones are, as if it has been exhumed and then repacked. 
I will provide a miner's pick for mm. people to help excavate. And I have a miner's pick. And Taskbar has, I a, do. Taskbar has a shovel, so we're just going to go ahead and use the shovel, I think. Uh, I will note that Collateral's not actually going to help dig. She'll just provide a tool to help dig. Between uh, Ninny and Taskbar, uh, the... Uh... I was going to say, I think uh, I I think your boy Arctos is going to stand here and watch. <laughs> yeah, Collateral poop. And after you finish exhuming the grave, um, Ninny, uh, you and Taspar are able to see that there is nothing on the inside of it. Just a little pit in the ground. Okay. All right. Well, uh, a promise is a promise. Uh, yeah, there actually is a version of this map that has uh, the dug-up grave in it, but I wasn't going to get an entire new um, <laughs> image just to do that one thing. Um, and so he... Uh, flits his way down into the hole and lays down uh, his back on the dirt, and as soon as he does that, he vanishes. Alright, chop chop, everyone in. Whoop! And as Collateral does it, vanishes. Now Arctos will jump in the hole, I guess. And, and Arctos, as you lay down, you vanish. <laughs> Gets Denny. Yeah, let's go lay down. Party time. Alright, Ninny lays down and vanishes. Wait, do we lose Isaac or, uh... Oh, yep. Nope, can't hear you, dog. Oh, if you've been talking this entire time and we haven't heard you, that sucks. No! We've been ignoring you. <laughs> oh, no. God damn it! No! Man, Discord's fucking all over the place tonight, I guess. Alright. No, hey, hey, there you are. All right, so Getz does this cool thing where he runs up, does like a, a 180 flip, well, 180 spin, and just like falls straight back with his arms crossed. And it kind of hurts on the way down, you fucking idiot. And I'm oh, yeah, for out. sure. Yeah, no. I, <laughs> you, you are falling fucking... down a hole. Yeah, you do don't a, let, you don't do let, a don't let your dreams spin. Don't let your memes be dreams. Like. And as you strike the ground, you vanish, and we're going to go. Strike the earth. To the Harn Mausoleum. Let's see. Alrighty, Ninny, um, whenever, uh, well, I mean, all of you guys, um, as soon as you touch the ground and, like, get in the proper position, um, you, what? Nothing. <laughs> as I soon can't as, control myself, just keep going. Okay, as soon as you, um, get into the proper, like, in the laying position, um, <laughs> you, uh, yeah, I know, oh. you, shut up, um, you blink and you open your eyes and you're standing before this large stone, um, mausoleum. Uh, the only light in this dismally dark place appears to be coming from Ikopuv, which is in Ninny's hands. How did that even work? There wasn't anything in there! Alright. So yeah, yeah the, well, um, the simple answer to that, my dear, is magic. There is a, um, set of bars in front of the, uh in front of the entrance to the mausoleum, but they appear to not be constructed of stone, but instead a translucent green sort of shimmering light. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna mage hand yeet the statue towards it. And as the statue um, nears them, they get less and less uh, corporeal. Well, I guess oh. we figured out what the statue is for. But then, thing. Oh, is our boy the crow oh, still oh, with us? Thank you, thank you. He's here. Crows be stills and Nash. <laughs> Shut up. What is with you tonight, man? I don't know. <laughs> I can't stop. <laughs> so, um, collateral. Yeah, you walk in and you see these three large um, uh, skeletons, uh, bones of some sort of large animal, and you can make a. Anyone who's walking in can make me a nature check if they want to try and identify what animal this is. Oh, yeah. Not a very tough one, but... Uh, it's a vegetable. <laughs> nature. Oop. So... Arcos, it's a vegetable. Ninny, it's a vegetable. <laughs> Ninny, it's yeah. an animal. No, um, Collateral and Getz, you realize that these are very, very large horse skeletons. Um, probably war horses. Well, someone yeah. loved their war horses very, very much. Although not They're... quite enough to actually, you know, set their remains somewhere nicer. 
Hmm. They were busy horsing around. <laughs> Uh, so you're in here um, I'll drag Nanny along with you so you have some light <laughs> yeah I forgot that I'm the one producing light in this situation <laughs> um, so there appear to be uh, three sets of doors one to the left one to the right all of them both of them close and one slightly ajar to the north uh, no it's a door uh, fuck I, you I, fuck I, you alright <laughs> Our hey, hey. is gonna go over here and open this door. <laughs> hey, right. Tyler, do, do you know what thing you forgot to do again? What's that? It pertains to this. Oh God damn it! Um, give me a second. You said a skeleton and a zombie. Um, no, 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 no. You're um fucking skeleton and both. What what is the what is the actual thing called? It's called like an undead spirit. Yes. Okay. Uh, I completely forgot. I'm very sorry. Um, it's okay. But this time, I might actually be using it. No, um, and I will get that to you in just a second. Um, you said you're opening up the side sarcophagus. Um, I do I think it's appropriate the door. to Wait. that, though. Okay, yeah, sorry, Sarcophagus. Sorry. For, sake of, for sake of reference, uh, I now have a skelly friend falling behind me. As you see, uh, Collateral just kind of, like, pulls a skull out from her bag. She's like, well, time to uh, fill your debt. And she'll just kind of yeet it onto the ground and boop. Um, big scale. Collateral, as your uh, undead servant takes shape, um, it starts to take on several um, aspects that were not native to the skull as you held it. Um, it molds itself with bones coming to fill the space. And the it takes on a stature and a size identical to yours in height and uh, build. In addition, the, uh, the skull now has two horns identical to what yours look like. That is decidedly not what you were like in life, my friend, but, uh, okay. All right, let's see. Oh, I did actually uh, import it. I just never actually made it a thing. Um, okay, so it doesn't have a, um, or, okay, so let's see. Pets and summons and it is in there so it doesn't have a token yet or it does have a token but it is just a uh, it is just a this it's just a red yeah yeah um so you're now the owner of it and you can edit the um edit the things as you need yeah thank you yes sir in the meantime um so yes you open up and it's it's the usual dust and just a draftiness of a tomb. Uh, there's this big sarcophagus laying in the center of it that has probably not been disturbed in quite some time. Uh, and that's that's the whole thing about it. Yes, I don't recommend we go grave robbing. I mean, there might be some profit in it, but it's usually far more trouble than it's worth. <clears throat> so, I've, so I've heard. <laughs> okay. I didn't plan on it, but thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, but if this is where the bad guy is, what I mean... You do know that there are two other rooms in this uh, mausoleum. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll look at the other doors. Open the other door, yeah. And yeah, this appears to be out. carbon copy of the last one. Are these a husband and wife? Well, the... the... Baron and Baroness were up above in the graveyard. Yeah, this is uh. a... this is an unrelated, um mausoleum this is not the right. brantifax mausoleum um i was peeking can i peek and yeah, ninny's in there um oh <laughs> ninny as you um enter this room you note that the sarcophagus within has been smashed to bits and holds no bones um the only thing left uh, are like some decayed um pieces of armor um there are actually several um yeah yeah uh, like decayed bits of armor broken weapons broken shields all destroyed by age except for a pristine pair of boots that appear to have little wings on each of them do they have the fur as well no just boots with the wings Damn. what's with graves without bones in it in this place i many i'll be real with you i think some people have some very serious issues that they need to work through around here okay okay she doesn't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> yeah, pristine little boots. There are sandals. I mean, you know, whatever. Whoever wants the fucking boots with wings on them can describe to me whatever they want it to look like. They're winged. Then he wants to take the boots, and they look like those shoes that like have little light up rims around the bottom. No, they do not. 
They're, they're, air, they're, air, they're air Jordans. You told me I could choose. <laughs> I chose cross. light up shoes. Air, air, air Jordans. Ninny, um, these shoes, as like their soles touch the ground as you wear them, um, number one, the wings start to flap, you know, uh, giving you a flying speed. I will add the winged boots to the item stab. Um, but as you step uh, with them, they leave a small trail of sparks that dissipate from the ground after a few seconds. All right, that is good enough. So let's see. Emily is the owner. Everyone else is an observer. Um, They're actually the Back to the Future, like, shoes that just, like, lace themselves. And yeah. as you lace the shoes up, um, you hear, like, a soft draft coming through. And... Um, Taspar says, Well, I don't see him here, but I believed it. And then the skeletons of the horses start to crinkle and start moving as they animate. Nope. And yeah. These three large uh, skeletal horses um, <clears throat> start to come to life. And then, walking through the gate of the mausoleum, steps this skeletal uh, creature with this strange, like, inky black aura surrounding it. And... Oh, I like that. It says, <sighs> Who dares rob the resting place of Drovatharn? No one's resting here. It's empty. You will be... F <laughs> you will be like the that. others fuel for my existence surrender your souls to me and i will make your deaths quick you can't I... no <laughs> that isn't a great bargain then die well foolish ones and then i will need everyone to just go ahead and get rid of them roll initiative things are going to die very poorly thank you very much <laughs> all right let's see which one am i gonna Here. do uh this ought to do it. Open the character sheet again so I can click the initiative button. It's a little more dubstepy than I remember it being, but it's fine. I forget where the. Um, so if you right click on your token and click the little sword and shield thing, it'll add it to the initiative tracker, and it'll come with a little button you can click to roll your initiative. Oh, 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 that's some fast horses, boy. <laughs> well, Those horses fast as fuck, boy. <laughs> they are horses, you know. They do they're that. Not, they're not horsing around. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> Back in the 90s, I was in the Shadowfell. Alrighty. So, oh yeah, he actually has to roll it. Oh wow, fast boy, goddamn. Fast as fuck, boy. <laughs> All right. And then we shall begin. At the top of round one, which oh no, I accidentally killed. Gets, I died. <laughs> I killed him. I can't believe I fucking killed him. All oh, right, that was quick. Oh, we can't get the hell out of here. Finger of death, bitch. <laughs> no. Uh... And uh, right here, you see his brain just suddenly hemorrhaged, and uh, sucks. There's like the sickly kind of green light that is kind of seeping into the. Uh, the places now but anywhere that you see drovath stand within about 10 feet of him is like this inky blackness that kind of sucks the color out of everything surrounding it he um, has a stand anyway it's gets you can go ahead yeah i blade song all right uh i'm blade sing uh and then uh, let me look at the map It occurs to me that my summon here does uh, <laughs> necrotic damage, and that probably won't have much effect. We'll see. Wow, that seems... uh, yeah. Could I humbly request how to turn the music down just a little bit? There you go. Okay. It's um, if you go into the music tab, which is the double little music note, you can actually uh, yeah. control the volume individually if you would like. Cool. So I was like, it was competing with voices a little bit. Sorry. What? Click on this button to see what the spells do. Yeah. Alright, so our boys blazing. Also, what's that red circle right there? 
Uh, red circle. Oh, that's uh, that's um, that's collateral is undead spirit. I just okay. I forgot to make a token for it. Okay, I, uh, just like my brain was just, like meatball. Is there a way to look at what the spells do? If you click on their names, not their icons, it'll open up what they do. All right, I think I'm gonna use this to set up. Rather than going in, I'm just going to do some setup. I'm going to cast Hold Person on my boy. Okay. Uh, on the white? Yep. Alrighty. Duly noted. Can you uh, link that for me? Well, I want it cast. If you click on the icon, it should cast. Oh. Yeah, it's icon to cast it, uh, name to uh, open up the uh, description. Alright, let's see here. And these motherfuckers are fast. Oh, yeah. Alrighty, Drovath Horn is going to make that save. Unfortunately, he succeeds. I apologize. Okay. Rolling a I'm gonna move up a little bit into, but that's my turn. Alrighty, uh, Drovath is going to take the first move, <clears throat> and uh, I don't like that aura. Well, as you as he moves in, um, it doesn't affect you quite yet, but it will at the beginning of your next turn. Um, Good. But he waves his sword around and he says, Now, oh, feed my essence, you fool! And then he will um do his thing. So he's going to swing a sword at you. I know you're blade singing, so this probably won't do shit. And nope. then he's going to try a life drain on you. Nope. Nope. Right. He swings his sword and he tries to thrust his hand at you, but he's clearly not prepared for your deft blade work. Uh, that will bring us to the Warhorse Skeletons. Um, one is going to get right here and not trigger attacks of opportunity. One's going to get right here. The other one is going to move to assist its master. So let's see. These bad boys are going to use their hooves. The first one here is going to be on our uh, Raven friend. Uh, woof. The second one is going to be on Getz. Nope. And third one is going to be on Arctos. Nope. All right. Unfortunately, oh wow, man, that fucking fucked him right up. All right, uh, yeah, what are these um these ho these war horses charge forward and try to trample you guys with their hooves, um, missing the two of you. But Taspar is clobbered by these hooves and he kind of reels back and uh, screeches at these things with his you know his bird beak. I don't know. <laughs> and that's gonna bring it to Arctos. So you've got a war horse skeleton next to you and you've got this kind of gross aura in front of you. It hasn't touched you, but uh, Getz is currently in it. Okay, well, seems like a good time to cast some spells. I would recommend it. Uh, dude, let's just catch a, cast a Scorching Ray at three targets, right? Yeah, this would be a disadvantage because you're in, uh, currently being threatened by this war horse. Mm -hmm. If you would like to move first. Here's the joke. Joke, I mean, thing about it. So I'm gonna use my Tides of Chaos. Oh. To give me advantage, which will just make it normal, but. I believe that's supposed to be for just one attack roll, but I'll give it to you on all of them. I feel like that's fair. Mm. Duly noted, I will note that you've used Tides of Chaos. Alright, yeah, you can go ahead and roll them. Uh, yeah, before you regain the use, you can just have me roll whenever. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is, I know how it works. Fun. I I've done my okay. I've done my look up on this. I need to I was the first thing I said before we did Candlekeep Mysteries was like, man, I really need to um, make sure I do Arctos better this time with his mad wild magic. So I I've done my homework. Alright, so I who are you attacking with these? On the horse. This one right here? Yeah. Okay. Uh yes, that does hit and uh little bit of bone kind of goes flying, but the thing is still kind of angry looking. Um, okay, Ooh, so I just, did it roll all of them? I, no, you do one for each. Just don't consume a okay. spell slot each time. Okay. Uh, do it again. Uh, did it do it? Did it go? No, it did not go. Nope. Okay. There spell. it is. And I get one more, right? I think uh -huh. it's three. Same target. Alright. Uh, 
All right, all of those hit. These little spirals of flame collide with this uh, warhorse's armor, blowing off little chunks and bits of bone and metal alike. But it still okay. looks like it's uh, scraping its hooves against the ground looking at you. Yeah, it's fine. I'm going to uh, use my bonus action to quicken spell. All right. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, we'll cast him. Can I do this? I can't remember if my ability lets me do this without using a spell slot. Uh, Quicken Spell still the... consumes a spell slot. No, 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 no. I'm looking at something else. I might not Quicken Spell. I, I have to... Because I can't remember... Do, 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 do. The Bloodline thing. Um, Mind of Illusion Cantrip. Disguise Cell. Now, what is the thing that gives me invisibility? Uh, I believe that might have been Fae Touched or uh, something like that. Oh, Fae Touched, yeah. Uh, it counts as a spell, so yes, you can use that uh, your spell casting, uh, your meta magic to do that. I did the thing, exact thing you're doing uh, a couple times in my other group. Yeah, so we're just going to do that. I'm going to cast uh, invisibility on myself okay. uh, with my the Quicken spell. And then move back here for my turn. Duly noted. I'm going to mark you down as invisible. Let's find that button. Hmm. Is there an invisible? You think there's an invisible thing, but uh, let's see. What about um, <laughs> Hunter's Mark? I'm just going to give you the mirror image one and just pretend that means uh, invisible. All right. Ninny. Uh, you've got three skeletal war horses, and Gets is currently engaged in battle with the white. Yeah, what's this thing here? That is the your were raven friend. Okay, cool. Cause, He's yeah, no, he, anybody who highlights red, I'm immediately just like, did I forget? Uh, let me go no. ahead and fix him to friendly then. That's my bad. It's everything is hostile by default for some reason, so it just kind okay. of. Uh... Well, let's start with uh, hit big man. As you step into um the uh, aura that it is currently exuding willingly. Um, you feel a wave of sickness overtake you, and I will need you to click on that there constitution save. Blah, 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 blah. You can actually just do it in the chat bar if you have any selected and just click it. Yeah. All right, oh, so, oh, oh. She saved as fuck! Yeah, Don't you... Give a goddamn. Yeah, you manage to keep your lunch as you step into the darkness that surrounds this white. As you see, like, the color of your skin, your peachy skin and your lovely orange hair just start to go kind of grayer and darker than they normally are. And you can do your turn as normal. Alright. I believe I get three hits at this level. No, you do not. You don't get your third hit until 10th level. Um, you can action surge if you want and get four in total, but your extra attack is only one for right now. Okay. that's Then I will action surge. We're gonna one. Come on. Can we? One, two, three, four. Woof. Okay, give me a second. Um, wow. <laughs> Shit. She does not like that this person wants to hurt her. Alright, and it go poof is magical, so <laughs> that, that solves one other thing. Yeah, um, your first swing goes a little short, but, um... <laughs> 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 but <laughs> your later strikes start to smack at its, uh, at its legs and uh, start to take off chunks of uh, rotten flesh and... You see the aura surrounding the white start to kind of flicker and uh, fade a little bit, but it is still on its uh, on its legs, and he looks down at you and says, You are a brave little one, but it will not save you here. I don't know about that. <laughs> All right, is that your turn? Yeah. All righty, Collateral. Collateral's just going to chuckle and say, It was the mistake of your unlife coming down here to face us. Uh, so let's invert this motherfucking magic circle. Okay. And... Boop! Uh, he and the horse cannot fucking leave that space now. And, uh, they have disadvantage on attacks against anyone outside of it. So, uh, they will have disadvantage hitting either of my friends there. Very well done. And my undead spirit is gonna yeet a grave bolt at our white friend. Alright. Two die. 14 to hit? 
um, it actually meets, and uh, so you see the uh, necrotic bolt wash over the white, um, but it seems like the energy comprising it kind of shimmers softly and kind of fizzles a little bit as it collides. It still does some damage, but not as much as you were expecting. That's fine. And I'm... You know, collateral just looks complete shitty, shitty grin. She's quite pleased. All right, yeah, wow. Very well done. Uh, that task, was me. Taskbar is going to uh, try and hold his own against this skeletal warhorse. He's like, keep up the fight, my friends, he says as he tries to uh, fucking... Uh, number one, he's going to swing. He's going to stab the warhorse with his short sword, and then he's going to try a beak attack. Um, which that constitution uh, save doesn't do anything to a warhorse because it can't become a... Uh, an undead creature cannot become a lycanthrope, so it's just not going to do anything. All right. So, let's see. That brings us to the top of the turn order, but before Getz goes, um, you guys hear the churning of earth and the breaking of rock outside as more, like, groans start to emanate from outside of the mausoleum. And you see a couple of these gross undead-looking monsters mm. start to shuffle their way into the mausoleum. And they, wow, fucking great. Great initiative, boys. Um, they are going to start walking in. But that brings us to our boy Getz. Oops, sorry. Isaac, you there? <laughs> no. Aw, uh, did we lose... Motherfucker, what is with Discord today? Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, we can hear yeah. you now. Yes. We're gonna start doing these over, like, phone calls. <laughs> I don't know how much of an improvement that's yeah, gonna be. Yeah, I, I, I can't go back. Also, one of us is out of country, so I don't know how that would look on my phone bill. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay. Oh, as you start your turn, you will have to make this con save for me. Or else take, take one, one necrotic damage. damage. Oh, you take no. one necrotic damage as he heals. Zero. <laughs> one, uh, I, I default to minimum of one. Yeah, it's fair. Even though it does specify half round of death. I know. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I am going to let's sword burst. Mm -hmm. So I so I need boom. Oh yeah, that will do it. Um, all other creatures. Th so Ninny is gonna have to succeed on the deck save as well, but it's fine. All right. Oh, and so so will Taskbar, but uh, it's fine. He understands. He knew the risk when he put on the beak. Warhorse will fail. Miserably. Warhorse will fail. Drovath will succeed. And then Taskbar. <laughs> Damn. Well, and Ninny, can you make that deck save that uh, Isaac linked? Uh. Hmm. And you're good. So the, the swords that he summons are a little too tall to hit you. All right. All right. So now, how do I get rid of that thing again? Uh, if you go to, I'll just get it for you. I would say it's kind of buried. Like it's, it's kind of tricky to get. It's to. because it's on another layer. Gotcha. All right, and then... Oh. Uh, hold on. What was that 2d6 for? That was the damage for the... Mm. For the sword burst. Oh, it already done rolled that for you. It rolls it as part of the... Oh, cast. did it? Yep, oh, it rolls. oh. Yeah. Okay. What's gotcha. Really, what's Never really mind. cool is that if you're uh, highlighting a... um a token, and if you hover over the damage bit, you can do, um, you can apply, uh, you can apply the damage, um, so, like, I can do this to the warhorse, or I can apply it as healing. It's very useful, very handy. Uh, um, I guess that's, yeah, it's my turn. All right. Um, let me re, re magic circle just so I got everything, but it's just pretty much, um... you trapped, motherfucker. Yeah, it's pretty much minute. nothing, huh? He um, could try to, like, teleport out of there, but he'd still need to make a save to be able to do it. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have any teleporting available, so... 
well, he can just eat shit, can he? <laughs> yeah, very, very well done. Very well done. Um, he is going to try and swing at um, at Ninny, who I believe is yeah, bitch. technically not in the circle. So, so, what trickery is this? After I finish the small one, you are next. <laughs> He's going to try and uh, not hit Ninny. Nope. Yeah, yeah no. Expertly, Sadly. <laughs> expertly done, Brandon. The shit-eating grin grows wider. <laughs> and shittier. <laughs> Alright, we're going to have a round of skeletons again. Uh, there's going to be one hoof attack on Ninny. Uh, oh, and also that... That's that, not going to... Uh, the horsey that's in the circle as well gets disadvantage. Okay. Well, the one that's in the circle is the one who's going to be trying to attack Getz. Poor Taskbar can't uh, get a break. Uh, does it succeed? Yeah, it still doesn't. <laughs> Fucking wow, yeah, you saved Getz's ass. And then the last one will try to hit Taskbar and actually miss. So we're all wow. good. So just just a question for clarity. Um, do are crits auto hits or if the are they still not hit if it's under the AC? Um, crits crits are automatic hits. Yes. What's okay. your AC with blade singing? Is it more than? It's 26? a twenty-two, but okay. I also have shield, okay, so I yeah. could have. I, in theory, I can have twenty-seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you can. <laughs> you can always hit if you, if you if you crit. You always hit unless there's like some kind of caveat otherwise in their stat block. Okay. Alrighty, that brings us to Arctos. Cool. Arctos is gonna take a couple steps this way and just line up some magic missiles here on the the white. Excellent. This one. Uh, so I, I keep on forgetting to fix it for you, and I'm going to do that right now. Um, but I'm going to roll your damage because the way that they program Magic Missile for some reason is fucking stupid. It just says roll two times three, which is not how that spell fucking works. I was going to say, uh, no? It's 3d4 plus three. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to need you to roll me a d100, my dude. I'm going to give you your wow, Tides of Chaos was... back. But... Well, uh, I don't get it back until the long rest right no no but... whenever i whenever i make you roll the surge you get ties of chaos back that's how it oh, works okay cool so if dm makes you roll the wild surge you uh, get it uh, roll right, that d100 pull... for me roll it for me twice uh, because there's a reason i don't know oh <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm selecting i'm just trying to see um me, i'm gonna give you that the... i'm gonna give you that Sharpen. second one uh, the oh, second no. one you are immune to being intoxicated by alcohol for the next 5d6 days so all right, let me oh, hear no. a pretty <laughs> <death. laughs> You can't get drunk for three weeks, boy. But here's the real <laughs> thing that I was on. So Arctos, um, the magic flies out of your hands, and um, the bristling and the bumpiness that you felt earlier when talking to the ghost comes to the surface and lurches out of your hands in a way that you weren't expecting. And instead of the normal little darts of uh, just play, plain magical energy, these little skulls start to fly out of your fingertips and start cackling as they fly towards your target. What were you uh, targeting? Uh, the white. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and you have the choice of necrotic or force damage here, but since it's already been established that necrotic Yeah, I think is we're gonna there. do the force damage. Okay. Um, but yes, you feel that your, um, magic is being warped in a way by your surroundings. Okay. Twelve uh, damage. Um, and you hear your fairies friend. in your head again, like that doesn't feel quite right. But at the same time, I, I don't know. Again, I don't know what's happening. Uh, help. <laughs> Oops. All right, is that your turn? Yep. All right, Ninny, you will make me a con save again. Okie dokie. Or take Beware. a hold. Ooh, Ooh. damage. Con. 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 All right, yeah, you succeed. Oh. Hooray! No, no suck for Drovath. <laughs> All right, you've got this white that is currently trapped in the magic circle by um by collateral. Then there's also a couple uh, war horses and some ghouls that are starting to slither their way into the mausoleum. You know she's going straight for the white. Oh yeah. All right. Out of those two, your first one, again, kind of, uh, the shimmering of the magic or, uh, circle kind of throws off your aim, but the second one, uh, delivers a strong blow straight to this thing's hip. Collateral, you fucked me. 
<laughs> Alrighty. That will bring us to speaking of which collateral. Uh, spirit go. Brrr. Mm -hmm. Nope. That is fine. I'm just gonna eat some Eldritch Blast at this motherfucking white. Alrighty. Boo boo. Yes, your uh, your little streams of that wand. <clears throat> your streams of golden magic do a cool little helix through the air as they uh, rocket towards the white and they blast him in the chest and he's starting to look like uh, parts of him parts of him are falling off in uh in little strips. Um, if you surrender now, we might make your death painless. There is no surrender for a servant of Orcus. I will eat your souls on the pyre. Or on the altar. Fuck, I fucked it up. God damn it. <laughs> All in yeah. character. He's, he's losing oh, I it. Fucked it up. Damn it! God damn it. <laughs> it's Orcus, my first day! <laughs> Alright, uh, Taskbar is going to disengage and join you guys here. Hey, he's Taskbar. Gonna... He's going to brandish a hand crossbow and shoot twice at one of the skeletal ho uh, horses. And both of them will hit. And actually, um, these two little bolts um, crack the armor surrounding this um, this warhorse. Enough for it to crumble into a pile of dust and bones. Please don't let that be my fucking... You know, I was going to say that a crossbow doesn't seem the best choice, but I stand... Uh, you, you stand... <laughs> we, we all stand, yes. We stand. You know who doesn't stand? That horse. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, like, the intent is it for the, like, um... I, I think, like, the, the skeleton and the armor are one being, I guess. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, yeah, you guys hear... And, like, a little chorus of just nasty ghouls as they start to pile upwards towards the group. Oh my God, it's music students. <laughs> Shut, <laughs> up. Shut up. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't look like they are able to quite make it. Oops. Haha, right. the circle helps again. It really does. Yeah, they would have been able to make a straight uh, be uh, beeline towards you. All right. And as those ghouls finish their turn, you hear yet more moaning from outside of the mausoleum. Oh, would they stop that? Finish the white before we're outnumbered. More than we already are. <laughs> Sounds like... Don't, don't make that joke. Alright. Um, that is gonna bring it to Getz. Uh, sorry, I closed my character sheet. Okay, there it is. Uh, At least we can hear you. Yeah, the great yeah. thing about Foundry is you can uh, double-click on your token and it brings you your character sheet. So fucking useful. Okay, let's let's hunters mark the white. Okay. Uh, let's hunters mark the white at third level, just just cause I got I don't have any the other use for that slot. All right. Weird that it auto rolls the damage when you cast. Yeah, it's um, it's just cause it's actually like, it's in there in no. The information. Actually, I, I was thinking it did the damage, not the duration. So I only need a first level. Okay. Um, because I hope this fucker isn't around for eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> Do you imagine? This fight's going to just, just be the worst. Off. Yeah, especially considering my magic circle only lasts for a minute. Yeah, uh, it'll be the... on round, I think, 12 is what <laughs> round it's going to fizzle out on. Okay, so then I'll... Let's right. hit him with the rapier. God. Messages. I like that. Yeah, unfortunately, um, you stab in between a pair of ribs and just don't connect. All right, well, <laughs> sorry, that's boss. my turn. Oh man, well, the hunter's mark was a good idea. Uh, Drovath is going to—he's um, not even talking anymore. He's just shrieking in frustration. As, um, <laughs> oh, actually, um, gets you make this con save for me. Uh, or take a, the dreaded two necrotic damage. Nope. Nope. Man, you fucking destroyed my white puzzle. Um, yeah, that's not gonna hit anybody. Good <laughs> lord, <laughs> fucking shut Little down bitch. this white. <laughs> it was a good, it's it was okay. a good tactical play, man. <laughs> they should, they should shut down more whites, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Woof. Um, that's what I live for, baby. So the warhorse comes down the in white, and is going man. to 
at <laughs> yeah really it's gonna make a disadvantage attack on gets and not hit and this one's gonna be on ninny does a, a 23 does hit ninny for 12 damage yep a little bit of an ouchie there Alrighty. Uh, that'll bring us to Arctos. Was Ninny already injured from before? Was she? Uh, yeah, because I, I subtracted her health, but she was already at 44 out of 59. That's weird. Uh, I don't know where I got that from. Maybe yeah, I I'm, didn't. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and. Didn't properly do a rest. Yeah, I'm gonna drop you down to 47 instead. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember that. Uh. You no know what worries. time it is. Oh boy. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna Eldritch Blast this stupid. Is the light dead? No, it's it? still going. It's uh, okay. That well, little, I'm gonna little... Eldritch Blast the light. And I'm He's gonna super use salty. My... <laughs> I'm gonna use my thing to give me advantage. Oh, uh, Tides of Chaos? Okay. Yeah. And again, as the magic kind of forms up within you, it feels cold, it feels dusty, and just uh, howls with the screams of the dead. As the, the... How do I roll with advantage on here? Um, you shift-click the uh, icon of it. Okay. Shift-click will roll with advantage, and control-click will roll with disadvantage. Okay. You can so also that's... roll it normally and press the plus button. Mm. Alright, so there's my two rolls. Okay. Um, yeah, how do you want to do this? Uh, <laughs> I just imagine, like, the, the, the first one comes out and it's just like a beam, like a, like a purple beam shoots out of a, his hand and nails the, the white through the chest. And the next one that comes out is like this white plume that plumes up into a giant skull that just consumes it. Like and, it. and it just, as it hits it, it falls to the ground and collapses. I'll use my reaction to wave goodbye to him as he is engulfed. <laughs> um, it's like one of those, um, you, you know in cartoons when they have like a nuclear, uh, like a nuclear mushroom cloud and it's like a, um, a skull? Yeah. yeah Alright, yes, and, um, you definitely, yeah, you feel how, sh even though it's different, it's strong, the energy that is coming from your Eldritch Blast. And as the white falls <laughs> back... Side, it's strong. <laughs> And as the white falls back, he's like, no, no, no! And then he kind of just falls backwards and starts to disintegrate into this black ash-looking substance. Um, and we're going to go ahead and swap music for the rest of it. Um, but yeah, he is dead. However, his minions do not appear to... Um... Actually, I will say the warhorse skeletons do, in fact, crumble into dust. But the ghouls are still here. Oh, that's problematic. Uh, yeah. Well, so they can... Here's the thing. They can enter the uh, circle. They just can't leave it. So if you guys want to bait them in there. I probably should have had them enter it because I don't think they're smart enough to... I, I thought they couldn't enter it, so that's my bad. But the well, the next oh, one's that's my bad that. too. All right. Well, Arctos is going to gonna stay here behind the, the meat shields. I mean, people. Um... <laughs> Yeah, this one's actually not a meat shield. He's all bone. Yeah, I think Getz is less of a meat shield and more of like a ballerina dancer who's just really hard to pin down. Everybody's a he's meat shield to Arthos. He's between I mean, it's us okay. and the bad guys. So. If, I, if I really want to do like full setup, I also have blink and blur. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Just as he's much not as a meat we... shield. He's just a shield. Alrighty. Ninny. Uh, the white uh -huh. is dead, and you've got a bunch of uh, ghouls starting to pour into the mausoleum. Yeah, you guys maybe step in the yeah. circle, and we'll just close these doors. Okay. Uh, so, Nenny's gonna go here and uh, hit Yon Bad Boy right there. Alrighty. Uh... Yeah, you thunk him good uh, twice across the head, and the second one rips his head clean off and sends it flying down the... Into the circle. Into the circle. Go into the circle. Yeah, and I go into the circle. Yeah. No, you're trapped. No, you're not undead. <laughs> no, I I hope I'm not. It's a magic circle, but only for <laughs> halflings. It's just a circle of just like barbecue sauce traced on the ground. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a four foot high wall. <laughs> and then he's like, eh, eh. <laughs> guys, help me. <laughs> Oh god, imagine like Forgotten Realms halflings if they were introduced to barbecue sauce. Oh man. Um, collateral. 
Right. Well, we got us some uh, some boys here. So I'm going to let loose some more Eldritch Blight. Let's. I don't. I don't like that guy. Okay. He looks especially. Smelly. Fun fact: If you're uh, hovering over a target and you press the T key, it'll uh, target. target them for me. Yep. Um. Let me see. Oh, their fucking AC is garbage. Um. Yeah. Both of your blasts um hit this thing's center mass, and you see like its flesh of its chest just get blown away into like a little cavernous maw inside of its uh, torso that slowly begins to stitch itself back into place a little more haphazardly than before. Oh no, you don't. Ha! Huh. But as these, uh, as it's starting to piece itself back together, the great bolt from your undead spirit uh, strikes it where the knitting flesh was, finishing, excuse me, the job. Alrighty. Plus dead. <laughs> yeah. Is that your turn? That me. All right. Taskbar is going to shoot a hand crossbow of the nearest one to him twice. Uh, not bad, my dude. Yeah, he um, he nails this one with uh, two bolts. Nothing fancy. Some good old-fashioned damage. Uh, bring us to the ghouls. So go for Nenny, go for Nenny, become trapped forever, or go for a minute. Um, so I'm just going to move them in as they are currently, like, you know, arranged. These two are going to enter the circle and go after Nenny, while two are going to start trying to chomp away at Getz, who they will definitely not do it. Um, so there's going to be a bite and a claw on Getz. So I'm just going to do that. And then, uh, let's see. Um, oh, cool. Cla okay. Does a 23 hit Getz? If I'm not a dick, it does. <laughs> be well, a dick. Hey, if be you want to be a dick, dick. It's, it's your spell slots, dog. Um, uh, let me look at my HP. And uh, that's fine, I'll take it. Alright, and then on Nini, a bite and a slash. A 20 will hit, but a 15 will not. Yep. Alright. Um, oh, we do have actually more of them, so I forgot that Once I Once they're in the circle, you can leave, my dear. Oh, actually, hang on. Let's um, Let's do something. Uh, I forgot that they're attacking Ninny, who's inside the circle. No, 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 uh, no. It's when they attack things outside the circle. Oh, okay, I see. So let's see. We're going to have three more gang up on Ninny. And... Yes, you might want to leave the circle now, my dear. Yeah, well, I'm a minute. I can't quite move yet. All right. So this, this, yeah, I can't quite seem to move. It's almost as if it's not my turn or something. Yeah, well, hang on, hang on. Um, this three fellow on Nini and yes. Um, so the one who is on Getz is going to do a bite at disadvantage. Then we're going to have two claws and a bite on Nini. No, no, and no. Nini is fine. She's but, dodging it like a motherfucker. Nini, your shield is just a... The shield of Durgeddon, um is just doing you a great favor here as it's blocking these creatures from even getting close to hitting you. That said, I think a disengage might be in order for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, if, if you want to step and get five opportunity attacks, it's your business. And then you uh, there's two final ghouls walking to the mausoleum. Bring us to get. Welcome. Enter my office. Move down one, and then I'm going to sword burst. All right. You're trying to hit Nenny again. She'll be fine. Uh, Nini, if you could roll that deck save for me. Oh, that would be 12 damage, nope. unfortunately. That was a really good roll for uh, the damage. Holy shit. I'm just going to roll a uh, two deck saves on the ghouls, and they will all take the 12 damage. So, wow, that was a fucking bonkers... Um, if you count the damage you did to Nini, that was uh, 60 damage in one cantrip. Uh, actually cutting off the head of one of the ghouls in the process. Um, which I will fix in just a second. So I will minus 12 mini. Alrighty. Uh, you are plus dead. Boop. And then I will get rid of your thing. Boop. Okie dokie. Uh, I'm not staying in the circle. Hmm. <laughs>
Well, while you do this, okay. I'm I am going to the hall to get some water. I am going to... Can you hold bonus actions, or it's just actions, isn't it? Um, you can, like, do a bonus action as, like, a held action, but it, it like, takes your action. Because, yeah, like, there are bonus actions. You can do a bonus action as an action, if that makes sense. Right. Um, but, like, yeah, it'll be just, But like, I can't do an action and then hold a bonus action. Correct. I have to do... Yeah, my held bonus use... action would be my action. Exactly, yes. That's what I thought. Mmm... Um, because I kind of, well, where are we at? You could alternatively, uh, run away. Well, I mean, I can get out. I'm just more so looking to see, you know, if shit hits the fan for Nenny, being able to be here to take some of these blows. Uh, what's the turn order? Can we see that somewhere? Yeah, it's the second tab yeah. on the right. Little fist. Yeah, I mean, Nenny goes before the ghouls. I just... Oh. Let me look real quick. I might be able to get Nenny out. Um, I am back. What is is Get staying in the circle with the ghouls? No, I haven't we're, decided we're yet. Well, I could delay my turn. Well, uh, I'm out of spell slots, so I'm just gonna be. I mean, it's just gonna delay it. So yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. bonus action Misty step. Okay. Why well, can't? Oh, it's because I got the. Okay. Go. There you go. Yeah, you were able to portal out of the. Uh, you were able to poof out of the. Uh, the magic aura circle, whatever. Well, it's good that we have confirmation that uh, Guess is not undead. <laughs> He's like a little bit fey, but not enough to upset the circle. Crazy, I have like no. I went from a character that was nothing but AOE spells to no I just did AOE it to spells. Move, like, move the slot. It's crazy. Disregarding um, Rhyme of the Frostmaid, I went from a character who shut down combats to a character who shut down combats. Fuck you, <laughs> <laughs> I went. Time, I went it's... from. I went from a uh, literal god to uh, somebody who has to play by rules. <laughs> hey, listen, um, I I'm happy. I did damage to Ninny. I, I never get to do that. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did more damage to Ninny than the ghouls have so far. Yep. Okay. I just I guess just spinning and doing spin moves the whole time. <laughs> Look out for Watch out for my speed move. Who's whose turn is it? It still um gets. He only did a bonus action. Oh, oh no, my action was my spin move. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, oh, you did another um, you did another blade thing. Oh shit. That no, that that, oh, that was. Okay. That seems so long ago. I'm so sorry, Arctos. <laughs> yeah, because I I. I drug my feet trying to figure out what I want no, to do. No, it's okay. No, I, I just completely kind of like, I was like, eh. Uh, my, uh, my DM and my other group dropped like a big bomb in the chat because her parents are awful. Okay. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna see this guy. This one, we're gonna uh, Eldritch Blast him. Okay. Who? Who? Uh, yes on both. Um, yeah, your strikes, um, pound this ghoul in the center of his chest and again like you know bits of flesh go flapping and uh, flying but um overall it appears to still be standing albeit very shakily uh, okay Nanny, i can finish right. him off don't worry yeah. well not before nanny's turn okay nanny whack on that one uh nanny nanny is going to give a whack on that one okay he did um, yeah, he is super dead from that. I'll just go ahead and, uh, well, for, as a formality, because I like seeing the damage numbers. Oh, it may, I like how it's bigger if it's a bigger number. Bigger uh, is better. Bigger, bigger is better. Better person. All right. Um, this one is injured, uh, near you. If you want to, like, mm -hmm. focus on injured ones. Yeah, I was just we're gonna... to clear you a way out. Well, even if you clear me a way out, I'm still going to 
have attack of opportunities on them. So I might yeah. as well try to kill as many before I try to move. Oh yeah, exactly, because you wouldn't be able to do anything with your actions if you just left anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then this one oh, is going to go to yeah. the injured one. Yep. I think he did, too. Yeah, uh, Nini, you um reel back with the Agopoof, and you swing down at this ghoul, and you just, like, crush him in a central column going down his body, down to basically his pelvis, before he just kind of falls in almost two pieces. It go poof. And uh, with that, Nini is going to poofs right out the circle. Alrighty, they are going to do one bite and two claws. And only one of them hits for four damage. Um, I'll take it. Leaving you safe and fresh with 31 hit points remaining. Yeah, that guy's gonna go after you, but I mean, the rest of them are gonna shuffle through the circle and they're gonna have this damage. still these two way you, over here. You still do have um, second wind as well if you want to use that. I forget what second wind is. It heals you as a bonus action. You can use it once per short rest. Oh. Under core, under features and feats, you click uh, the icon on the second wind, you can heal it. Under features, second wind. Oh, that is there, isn't it? Alright. Oh boy, eight. I mean, fucking more damage than the ghoul did to you. Alrighty. Collateral. Alright, well, uh,. I'm not. I'm not too fond of our friend that's not in the circle. So, uh, Blat Blat. Uh, let's see here. Uh, fucking, yeah. Um, the first one, um, like, this thing is barely clinging to life as the first Eldritch Blast strikes it. And then you, uh, send another, like, I believe your Eldritch Blast is like this gold kind of, like, glittery looking, uh, thing. Sure is. And so your second Eldritch Blast travels into the ghoul's mouth, and you see it kind of like kind of cough a little bit, and then its head explodes into a shower of golden glittery sparks all over the place. Applause, please. <laughs> and then Undead Spirit's gonna yeet that one. Uh, I get the thing. Great bolt. Best use of Magic Circle I've ever seen. I really should have been targeting you for uh, concentration, but I mean, like, it's not like it would have done anything. Um, because they couldn't get to you. So, okay. Alrighty. Yes, that absolutely does it. Um, and deal some damage. It's not quite dead yet. Alright. But we can see if Taskbar has anything to say about it. Taskbar, my friend, I think that one's still looking a little lively, don't you? Um, and that will kill it. And he'll add another one to another one. I stand corrected. Um, yeah, the last bolt is enough to send it uh, falling over backwards. Oops, that's frightened. Not dead. <laughs> Remove frightened. I'm not afraid. Oops. Fears nothing anymore. Alrighty. Final ghoul takes five damage. And let's see. The ghouls are going to try and, like, you know, desperately, like, you know, kind of get to the edge of the magic circle, but they are unable to uh, cascade over themselves to attack um, Nini and Arctos effectively. There will be one bite on Mini and one bite, uh, one claw on Arctos. I don't believe either of those hit. Uh, it depends on what Arctos's AC is. Uh, the, the 16 does hit on Arctos. Like, a claw manages to, like, kind of break out of the magic circle and scratch you for 7 damage. Yep. Oh, yes, don't stand too close, my dears. Unless you're, you know, Nenny and you're gonna hit the damn things. Okay. That brings us to Getz. There's a couple fish in a barrel for you. Okay. Uh. Smelly, smelly, smelly um, fish. Fish already smell. No, fresh fish do not. Uh, it's meaningful. Things are wrong. Enough. Okay, fresh fish do not smell nearly as much. How about that? <laughs> yeah, fish have a smell no matter what. Most things do. I'm gonna occupy this spot. I'm gonna basically go around, but okay. I'm gonna. You can you can occupy. stand if you need me to move a dead enemy. You can stand on them. So. And then I here comes another spin move. Watch out for my spin move. I'll never not say it. Oh, damn. Uh, <laughs> one succeeds. Oh, Isaac, I'm so sorry, Oof. buddy. A 21 <laughs> and a 17. Yeah, your uh, sword burst like goes and 
kind of chops around these things, but the dulled blades don't find purchase on the skins of these ghouls. What about the third one? Or is it already dead? It's already dead, yeah. There's only two remaining. Oh, I got three that don't have dead things. Okay, that's... Do you really? Hmm, weird. Yeah, oh. that one that's alive, that one that's alive, and that one that's alive. Not alive, or it shouldn't be. Oh, I see, I see. It's the... Okay, wow. All right, so then there's a third one that needs to make that deck save, so there may be hope for you yet. Let's see, as soon as my thing loads. Uh... Come on, baby, come on. Uh -huh. Hey! Okay. You deal six damage to one of the ghouls, and it reels back a little bit, but kind of like... It, it leans back at the crux of its spine far farther than it should be able to lean back, and then it kind of like slowly sludges its way back up and just... At you. Almost enviable, okay. although I don't imagine that would feel quite so uh, relaxing on a live body. <laughs> nope. Oh. Um, and then... Also, hello, Brag Basher, our dog in the chat. I cannot believe you're back, but you are more than welcome. <laughs> Misty what Stitt. a way to hype up our time. Listen, we were, gone for like, we were gone for like two weeks, so I was like, oh man, if we had any fucking constant viewership, it is gone now. But yeah, no, that's great. Oh yeah, I forgot Life that happens for combat. people. Yeah. I forgot that I had two goals here. Hmm. Yeah. Well. Yeah, no, screw you guys, I'm leaving. <laughs> okay. That's my turn. Alrighty. Arctos. There are three ghouls in the magic circle and two ghouls that Tyler totally forgot about because he was zoomed too far in. Oh well. I, I'm gonna just... If they weren't moving, then I'm just gonna say they're gone. Fuck it. They died of old age. <laughs> I mean, it's fishing a girl at this point. It's just... Show just us what you got. Show us what you got. Uh, Arcus is gonna pull out his rapier and poke at this guy right next to me. <laughs> A bull change of strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it works. Uh, yeah, you managed to. Not. You do oh manage God, to poke the ghoul. Uh, its skin right. kind of tucks in a little bit at the point of your rapier. Doesn't do much, but yes. Um, I think we're gonna. I'll take the attack. 20, 25. Okay. Yeah, let's move down here. Uh, let me see here. It's gonna do another claw at you at disadvantage. Uh, and you'll take five damage and um, a heads or tails? Uh, tails. Tails never fails. All right, roll me a d100 as the Damn it. <laughs> as the strike. Um, it doesn't... Jeez, wow, 99. Oh, no. So the strike doesn't... Um, the strike doesn't, gra uh, like you know, cut you that hard. It's, it draws some blood, and it's it's a ghoul attack, so it's probably not the best thing. It's probably going to be infected if you don't treat it eventually. But it does elicit a strong magical response in your body, and it expresses itself as a soft ethereal music that begins to play around you. Uh, uh, and a ninety-nine says that I regain all expended sorcery points. I don't know. What oh fuck, you're right. Yeah, you're, you're, you're so right. I'm sorry. I was looking at ninety-eight. <laughs> yeah. So instead, excuse me. As the blood is drawn from this one little cut that is made by the claws of this ghoul, um, you see it start to glow with like this uh, energy that manifests in this wispy white kind of tendrils that start to ache over all of your cuts, and you start to feel the magical energy swirling around you and returning as if you're recharged and ready for uh, using more of your unique brand of magic against these ghouls. Okay. Well, if that's the case... <laughs> if that's the case, see my gif in the uh, Discord. Yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna quicken spell. Yep. Um, <laughs> my I guess just Eldritch Blast now, and we'll target the guy who hit me here. Alrighty, this one here. Yeah, go yep. and roll those. All right, and then as you channel the energy that is seeping from your wounds into this uh, spiraling white kind of blast of just pure uh, energy. You see this ghoul kind of like tilt its head in surprise and then it collides into it and completely just shatters this thing into a million little bits of flesh. Dead. We did it. Okie dokie. Arctus is like, that hurt. <laughs> Ninny. There are two ghouls remaining. One that is right next to you in the circle, and one that is uh, a little farther into it. Yeah, she's gonna hit the ones close to her. How's he doing? 
Uh, with that 15, uh, you managed to lop off its head. He did. Oh, yeah. Oops. Not not equal 15, yeah. minus 15. There you go. All right. It's fun that it supports There's... integers like that, though. And she's going to move to the next one. I give him a hit, too. And you bonk him on the head, and you hear his neck bones crack. But then, like, it kind of, like, and then it cracks back into place as it looks at you menacingly. That That's really, really unpleasant. Good. All right. Collateral. <laughs> Salvo. <laughs> All right. And then finally, Collateral, your uh, little twin bolts of golden glittery energy um, hit this thing while it's like trying to fix its neck from the blow from Ninny, and it kind of just moans once and then keels over. And she gives falls she gives flat. her she gives her wand a twirl like it's a fucking lightsaber, like zhoo, zhoo, only she and the two elders blasts, and then she immediately pockets it after letting the second one because she knows that thing's fucking dead. <laughs> Alrighty, and you guys have survived the encounter with the uh, ghouls, and. Um, gets. You actually hear uh, a pair of hands clapping as the final ghoul falls. Cool. Uh, hey. And uh. <clears throat> this gentleman is uh, <laughs> behind you, clapping his hands. It's a darker skinned gentleman with this long, wavy brown hair with glowing red eyes and a very pointed goatee. Uh, he's wearing an aristocrat's uniform that has, uh, it, it's, the buttons are open enough to where you can see, like, the upper parts of his chest and a red necklace dangling from his neck. And Sexy man. He's clapping, he says, Ah, I see you've taken care of the little, uh, discrepancy here in Barovia for me. This is very helpful in the, uh, the greater scheme of things. D do you mind if I come in? No. Uh uh, d don't, don't answer that. <laughs> my, my friend says no. I, you know, I, 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 I house rules. Uh, uh, my friend says, says don't, but, um, we can chat. I mean, unfortunately for your friend, I am afraid that I am the proprietor of the location. And I will be seeing myself in if you do not mind. And he steps through the door. <laughs> Oh, um, it was that. It was that. <laughs> definitely that guy who told me no. I would have let you in, but it was panic, definitely panic, that guy. Panic. <laughs> Collateral was gonna step out, but I mean that works too. So uh, this uh, this uh, very attractive um, gentleman with the glowing red eyes kind of looks over the scene of carnage and he says, "Ah, I see a dead white and a score of ghouls and what appears to be a little girl. Uh, hello, young lady. You appear to have just uh." Done a great deal of work on my behalf. Would, for that, I thank you. Profusely. Would the count care to step Me? into my circle? <laughs> yes, he is saying he is saying that. Um, actually, yes. You know what he does? Um, collateral. You feel your spell immediately end as he walks into it. I mean, panic, panic, panic. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't planning on keeping anyone else in there, but <laughs> if he wants to, if he wants to play like that, that's fine. So he uh, walks up to you, Ninny, and he extends a hand for shaking. And then he shakes his hand. And it, nothing out of the ordinary. It's a simple... He, he's he got a firm um, handshake and... It's, it's a fake hand. It pops right off. <laughs> you, can tell, <laughs> you, can tell, <laughs> you can tell that he's respecting your height with how he kind of, like, he lowers his center of gravity to um, uh, do the handshake. He says, Now, this abomination of Orcus trying to uh, muscle his way in on my territory has been rectified, and for this you have my utmost thanks. You may keep anything you found inside the mausoleum as if it were to your own. And I would be delighted to speed your way back to whence you came. I'd appreciate that, yeah. Uh, first question, did the white drop anything of value when he fucking died? Um, he disintegrated into black ash. Not he even didn't... his sword remains? No, Ninny has his fancy flying boots, though. Oh yeah, they're all the time. Second question... Uh, how's our raven friend looking, what with our present company and all? Um, he, actually, uh, so Taspar is kind of like, you can see he's very clearly trying to stick to the walls, not trying to make himself look big. <laughs> actually, you know what? He's literally just a tiny little raven pecking at the ghoul corpses right now. 
He's here. Come! Okay. This uh, guy's chill. I don't know what's wrong with collateral, you. Collateral's gonna do the, uh, <laughs> the thing, and she'll smile pleasantly, and she'll give a bow and say, Oh, you must be the Count Strahd von Zerovich, I've heard. And so very little about. You see him turn his neck immediately, super, like, superhumanly fast as you say his name. And again, the, um, the walls of the mausoleum shake and quiver, and you see dust falling, and he says, Yes. I see you've learned my name, and I have not even come to welcome you. I am clearly a poor host in this instance. I didn't even know you owned the place, so... I more than own the place. <laughs> Barovia is me. Its people belong to me, its land belongs to me. I am the land. Such is the lordship. Such is the bird. Okay. Of of lordship? <laughs> Collateral's like trying to make nice, but she's like, uh, I'm, I'm trying to follow you, buddy. There is no need to follow. I merely wish to thank you for the services that you have rendered. This part of the this part of Barovia is once again untainted by those who would threaten my power, and all will go right again. This saves me the trouble of having to dispatch troops of my own to take care of the situation. Now, would you care for aid in returning to whence you came? You are not. Uh, I did not invite you to this place, and so I have no interest in hunting you. <clears throat> you should consider yourself lucky. Yeah, I'll take that that uh that ticket out of here. Let uh, let's get going. Perfect. Um. So he walks back through the bars, and as he steps outside again, the eerie green glow kind of like dissipates. Um. And he approaches uh, the road in the distance, and he waves his hand forward, and you see the mists that are omnipresent around the mausoleum start to part in a clear uh, valley uh, surrounding the road and he says to you follow this road and eventually you will find yourself back in which way and you will find it a little different than you remembered it I wish you a safe travel my friends and pray that we do not meet again okay. um, collateral will smile politely and say good day count and to you as well my Arctos is going to give him a very wide berth. And he While everybody else is being really careful of Straw, Denny is Collateral just treating him like a, her new uh uh her new ally. This dude shook her hand and was really nice to her. <laughs> and as you guys start to walk away, um you hear just a whoosh. And then if you turn around, you do not see Strahd anymore. All you see is a single bat flying away into the distance. And a raven, Arctos like, going quickly to oh, that. break That's into cool. a very... <laughs> Arctos is going to, like, start panting very heavily and be like, break into a sweat and be like, how did we survive that? What? He's just... Do we he's see, uh, do we see a raven flying, like, super double speed in the opposite direction? <laughs> you do, actually. I completely keep on forgetting about that part, to be perfectly honest with you. That was a long combat, so I come... Oh, man. Um... Uh, so yeah, um, I've decided that our Strahd is just Raffion from WoW. Uh, you're welcome. If you want to use different art, if any of you run uh, Curse of Strahd, you can, I don't care. I'll run it for us at some point. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that, um, that about wraps up. And as you guys start to walk down the, um, the road, just as Strahd indicated, you find yourself back in Witchway, but it looks a little different. Um, as a matter of fact, um... Whereas you first chanced upon which way, um, it was in the it was in the middle of the Shadowfell, so it was all gloomy and foggy and broken down. But as you return to it after following the road back, you see that you appear to be back in the normal world. It's a little gloomy, but not in the like the omnipresent lack of light. It's gloomy in the way of like there are trees shading the abandoned manor. Um, the dust is nowhere near as omnipresent, and there aren't any. Um, there aren't any strange tricks of the light catching your eye, and most prominently is in the graveyard. There are four buried, uh, there are four meticulously cared for graves. 
not having been dug up, just sitting at peace. Uh, collateral, you find your carriage and your wagon uh, right outside of the manor, and your horses look none the worse for wear. I'm going to give a nod to my undead spirit and say, well, your debt has been repaid. Go in peace, such and so forth. And she'll just give a wave of her wand and he'll go poof. <laughs> he collapses into a pile of bones. Well, uh, yeah. I know, I'm kidding. I know, I, know, I know, I'm kidding. Peace be with you and also with you. Poof. And with your, and with your spirit. Clatter, 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 clatter. <laughs> We're not Catholic here. I mean, some of us are, but like. <laughs> I can't believe they fucking it, audible. It, it, in they, this group before of before you can before you converted Isaac, I want to know. Um, did you go to P, uh, church a lot as a kid or anything? Yeah. Okay. So did they did whatever denomination you were before this? Did they audible mm-hmm. the playbook for y'all as well? Was it uh, peace be with, and also with you, or did they change it up to and with your spirit later, or was that uh? Did that um, not happen I think to that was only Catholics. Mine was I like very. Super Baptist, so it's basically there are no rules, and yeah. as lo- as long as we can have a meal after church. I see. That's why I like yeah, Baptists the... tend not to have a lot of like call and repeat. Mm-hmm. That's why I love. But the... in the Episcopal Church, <laughs> it, it was always and also with you. And when the Catholics changed it to it and with your spirit and typical typical Episcopal fashion, they were like, nope. The best part about the Episcopal Church for me is that, like, I, I, I was raised Catholic, but um, my godmother's mother was, like, a born-again Christian after recovering from alcoholism or whatever, um, and she went to Episcopal Church, and we would go with her sometimes, and as a kid, I was so into Episcopalianism because of the one pastor they had would give, like, would just hand out fucking fruit punch and cookies after services to everyone, and I was like, well, this is fucking awesome. The other guys make me feel, like, guilty about shit and then make me eat, like, thin wafers. This guy's got cookies. He also has thin wafers. Yeah, yeah, he does. It's fair. Everybody gets those. (laughs) That was just the mind of a kid, you know? I was like, well, fuck this shit. This guy has fruit punch. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, thus ends the Book of the Raven. Um, I had to... We didn't get any treasure other than the boot. There well, no I he, friends we made along the way. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You did get some stuff that's worth money. Here's the other thing. There's um fucking about I want to say how, how many adventures are in here? Uh, there, there's a lot of adventures in here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen adventures in here. You guys were already kind of loaded on magic items to begin with. I mean, if you look at Arctos' sheet, boy is fucking loaded. <laughs> on uh, uh, magic items. Um, Collateral only laments that we got the map said, hey, there's treasure here. And ultimately, we didn't have a ton to show for it. No, apparently it was kind Although, of. Uh, it, it, that's oh, a, that's um, kind that was of. a trick. <laughs> that, it's, you, that's kind of what it was. It was. It's kind of just the module as a whole. Presumably, I do still have the uh, paintings and such and such. You do. And they're. Uh, also, sorry, not the module, the, the mystery. So the puzzle in this one was entirely laying down in the little girl's grave. Uh, I kind of... But you learn because the girl tells you. I, I changed things up a bit. It's even less connected than that in the written module, which is why I didn't like this one at all. Um, oh? Yeah, it's... The thing with Book of the Raven is that um, all... It, it starts off as a... Uh, I, uh, Josh, you should probably take this time to figure out your proficiencies, but as a reminder... <laughs> just so you don't oh yeah, anything. yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta. Um, okay, uh, let's see here. Tiefling proficiency. You don't get any proficiencies as tiefling, but your background gives you proficiencies. I believe you were either okay. a sage or a cloistered scholar, one of the two. Um, I'm pretty sure it was sage. Cloisters. Um. So yeah, as as default, this uh adventure is just these three set pieces. It's the book. It's which way. And uh, and um and the manor and then um the mausoleum and there is so very little connecting them at all. Um, lying on the grave is what's supposed to get you into the Shadowfell, not what's supposed to get you into uh, the mausoleum. But I've swapped it around a little bit because um, I like the idea of just accidentally ending up in the Shadowfell. I think that's a much cooler way to get there. Um, but like, yeah, no, there's like there's no puzzles in the place. There's no little things the the little girl is supposed to just try to scare you away um there's like no reason why the figurine of orcus is there in the first place there's there's so much missing shit that is good writing oh it's not connected it's chris perkins i'm like i don't know what's up 
Chris Perkins is ordinarily phenomenal, so I don't know what happened. Um, Bad day. Yeah, I guess I know it was because this was rushed to fill the 17th spot. Um, but I don't know. But the most important thing is, did you guys have fun in the end? Was yeah. it all right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You made it a lot better than how you just explained it, because yeah. my goodness. So, also, I will always have fun using Magic Circle. <laughs> yeah, that was a yeah. very that was very good use of Magic Circle. As a matter of fact, you get a point of inspiration. I I don't do that enough. Yeah. Um, you can. Uh, so the character sheets as a as default don't have a way of um, tracking inspiration. So what I usually do is I just turn one of my resources into inspiration counter. Um, there is uh, at least on mine here. It it does have an inspiration thing. It's just a check. Right. No. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot we only do. Well, I I kind of like give spit like um. I personally like giving inspiration up to like a cap. Like you can have up to three inspirations. Um, and I like that. If we don't want to do that, then that's fine. But that's how I rule it personally. Um, that's not me. Uh, yeah, I think it, it, we have to think about. Number one, you don't give them out often enough for three inspirations sure. to even and be a thing I, right I, now. And I, I need and to be number better about two, that. Number two, uh, points of inspiration traditionally are uh, null and void at the end of a play session. So, like, I think it also works to uh, make it to where we have to use them mm -hmm. and have to have them given out because... Yeah. Um, the thing is that I think that was actually a Liam ruling. I, I need to check the DMG again, but I don't think that's a default ruling that you lose it at the end of the session. I don't session. know, but it's a really common one. Yeah, I, I've is. heard a lot of people, like, in points of inspiration are temporary, yeah. so you don't just, like, have ten points of inspiration. Well, and... for a while we were giving out points of inspiration for good jokes outside of the campaign. So yes! I mean, like... um, so let me, let me go ahead and go down the list here. Um, so Ninny can have a point of inspiration for a uh, good role play with uh, Count Strahd von Zarevich. Which her new best friend. Her new best friend. Um, Josh can have inspiration for the fucking shitty emo band jokes that were done. And, um... Yeah. <laughs> oh god, and Isaac can have inspiration on Getz as well for having the guts to hurt Ninny to kill a bunch of ghouls. You know, you fucking... Yeah. You forced her to take one for the team, and I respect and, that. And then I'm immediately start... loses an inspiration for hurting Ninny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start spamming Wild Surge, by the way. Oh, dude, fucking, um... <laughs> Ties of Chaos is the best. I love Ties of Chaos. For, for a long time, I didn't understand how it worked. Um, but now I'm like, oh my god, I can give him a Wild Surge whenever I want if he uses Ties of Chaos. But I have to get... That's the thing, it's a give and take with the DM. If I make you have a Wild Surge, I have to give Ties of Chaos back to you. Yep. Um, well, you know? Brag, it's not actually, um, Curse of Strahd. It's just one of the, uh, Candlekeep Mysteries modules that briefly dipped into Barovia, so I figured I'd throw him in there a little bit. No, we're not yeah. playing Curse of Strahd. I would need to prep a lot I want more. to, though. I've only I ever would... gotten halfway through Curse I of Strahd. I would be delighted to run it for you guys sometime. Yeah, we could do Curse of Strahd Candlekeep Edition. Oh, God. Candlestick we, Edition. Like, we, we played Curse of Strahd with one of my, uh, well, a couple of my friends. I DM'd And it. then, yeah, Tyler DM'd it. But then, like, uh, one of the friends that was in that group uh, was in college, and he just got really busy, yeah. and we were just like, all right. And we were, like, away from it for, like, half a year, and then COVID hit. We were like, okay, so we're just never going to come back to this, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, we would definitely I... finish it, so, I mean... I played Neverwinter Nights, uh, like, on a roleplay server in Barovia for about a month. Oh, and I remember you talking about my that. My word. It was fascinating, and my god, the Barovians are such <laughs> miserable people. Oh, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I just remember... Uh, my favorite thing was we just did this side mission with one of uh, my friend's characters named Dave Akeen. Uh, oh, yeah. so, so, and so, Dave so, King was illiterate. Yeah, so so and, here, th this is what this is what it was. It was um, uh, Maury was one of the uh, one of the people, and they couldn't make a couple sessions. Uh, they couldn't make the session in which they got to Barovia in the first place. So I said, all right, um, that means that Finn, their character. Um, wasn't there with them at the time. They were like there present, but whenever they got to Barovia, they weren't present. So whenever Mori was able to, I said, okay, we're going to do a fun session called uh, Finn's Escape from Castle Ravenloft, where I gave all the other players burner, in, uh, burner PCs to escape from Castle Ravenloft with Finn in order to kind of like expand upon Castle Ravenloft, but also like, you know, haha, <laughs> fun. And 
I forgot like what it was, but I was like, all right, you're a fighter, you're a barbarian, you're a cleric, you feel this way about each other, you have these dark secrets, um, you get to choose the race and the name. And our friend Sam, they decided that theirs was a dragonborn named Davakeen. Of course it's a dragon, yeah. <laughs> yep. And uh, Davakeen was being interrogated about a journal that was missing. Yeah. And the final words to come out of Davakeen's mouth were, but Davakeen can't read. Davakeen's dying words, Mwah. and we still remember it to this day. Um, if you run Curse of Strahd, I would love it. I'm not gonna play Aerithir, and I don't know about Mango for uh, Ravenloft because I want uh, that would not be a good place yeah. for yeah. No. any characters you love. Yeah, I, I, I want I want to save Aerithir and Mango for like a we're riding our own Wheel of Time campaign. <laughs> or Luffy back out, boys. <laughs> and Brandon, this is my level 20 <laughs> Ranger Bard. <laughs> He's a chosen of Ball. Well, he was. <laughs> level 20 Ranger, level 20 Bard. I'll reset him. I don't even care. I'll, I'll Basically, play, what we'll end up doing. But uh... I'll play. I'll play dumb Rash Man. <laughs> um, I'll play Scotty just... Bushwhacker. <laughs> You and they, they just say that Strahd just comes up and Luffy dumb 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 rash man. Okay, if we play if we play um fucking Strahd, I have to play Count Don, right? And then me and Strahd can just have a vampire on. Are we just gonna have well, a fucking... I, I figured that Luffy would show up in a cape cape with uh with fake vampire teeth. Are we just gonna... I just I need to figure I... out how to like mix a Boston accent with, well, not a Boston, New York Mafia Boston. is bigger. N I, New I, York I... accent with a uh, fucking, what, where, where are the, the, most of the vampires from? Like, uh, Berlin. Eastern Bloc Europe? Oh, oh Transylvania. <laughs> Yeah. Transylvania. My brain was thinking Austria, and I'm like, no, not Austria. I want to suck your blood. I, I preface my offer to run it with a warning that where anything else, I'm a reasonable DM, I pull my punches or whatever. For the sake of the tone of Barovia and yada yada yada, I will not be so forgiving. That is 100% The whole point of Barovia a... is that it's cruel and terrible and mean, like... And superstitious, so if you have Meme Lord McMeme Lord roll up and like, Hi, I'm Meme Lord Meme they will fucking have you on a pyre within the hour. <laughs> yeah, that's that's Captain Meme Lord McMeme <laughs> Meme Lord to you. Yeah, there are two ways he's we can... Final word says he's burned alive. <laughs> there are two... There are two ways we could go about this. Number one, we could fucking um, just send a bunch of um, we can send a bunch of fucking meme lords to the grinder and see how much we can fuck with Brandon until he's finally like, "Fuck you guys, I'm not running this anymore." Or we could meme it. team six. <laughs> Look, no, the only way this works is that we Brandon starts making the campaign. It needs to be long term. So that we're in Barovia for a while, and then our filler arc will be the the Halloween episode where we <laughs> all get burner characters in the same exact setting, but we just mean the hell out of it. We just he puts a shambling mound. No, 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 no. It's gonna be like doing raids on Hogger and old school, um, old school WoW, where you put you put Strahd down. He in all we do is we have a bunch of level one characters and we just throw them at him one after another until we're finally able to kill him. I'm actually gonna do a homebrew race of a shambling mound, and his name is gonna be Gary Shambly. <laughs> <laughs> and one of you is gonna play a ranger who wears a green shirt and brown pants, and his uh, his animal companion is a Great Dane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey. That's oh my god, Luffy is you shaggy. Joke, but literally. <laughs> I can't look oh my god. Like, like fucking oh, scoop. <laughs> So this is this is great, right? Because fucking I don't know what I'm I, I, I don't know if I can do anything with Ragnar because that's kind of because like Ragnar would be a great burner villain for like a mid campaign, like really big bad wants to infect the world with lycanthropy. But canon, Mark says he's just chilling in Sigil doing his thing. Like he's watching T V with a uh, with a uh, Grog with Grognar fist punch fist or punch piss. God. Punch um, piss. The, my my man, <laughs> but 
and then like but like that regardless like um then there's jermong who is like currently suffering like you know with um i've i've gained and lost divinity and now i am an ephemeral ghost on the wind and i await for the adventurer to claim my sword and redeem the souls of me my brother and my father and then lufir and kaldago are traveling the the realms immortal just like trying taller and taller sandwiches trying to fit them all in their mouth <laughs> I mean, I'm that's on an what adventure you... with my best friend. <laughs> that's how you should retire, man. Mm -hmm. Luffy is the only one, ironically, like the only one who got a happy ending out of like those three. Uh, I would argue that like Jeremy. And you know what? The... He's the only one who deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> I would argue that Jeremy is like he got what he wanted, but it was empty in the end, and I think that was. Wasn't like, it Luffy's idea to start with war crimes? <laughs> Yeah, well, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. He was the one who, like, fucking raised a bandit clan and started raising settlements, and then he got to be fucking all cool with everything. And now he's just known throughout the realms as a nuisance more than he... It's like, imagine if Drist were annoying. So instead of like, oh my god, Drist is here to save us, it's, oh, fuck, Luffy's here to save us. I'm or, you know, if, if, you know, if Mussolini got to, you know, Scooby-Doo the end of it. <laughs> if Mussolini were a Twitch streamer. <laughs> I really like the idea that Luffy is like the the opposite of Drist, where <laughs> Drist is a super cool badass hero who like didn't want to be a hero and is like been thrust into this position. And Luffy is like, I'm a good guy and I'm gonna save the world, raise his bandits, and murder a city. <laughs> 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 oh my god so i think that means that the next the next uh joke thing we do has to be dressed versus luffy right like luffy luffy has crashed multiple <laughs> helicopters luffy. in our time <laughs> luffy free Canonic elf canonically he is he is he has impersonated Drist too, so it's Drist versus Luffy as Drist. you know what's really funny is that in the original Baldur's gate game you could actually meet Drist. And if you named your character Drist or Drist O'Erden, he comments on this. And he's like, that's kind of weird, but okay. But if you have a bad reputation and you're known for being evil, he literally says on site he tries to fuck you up for uh, spoiling his bad name. Except I think, I think Luffy probably goes by like Dripped the Burden <laughs> or something like <laughs> He goes by Drip. He's yeah. just, it's just Luffy in the fucking Supreme jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! I need to. I need to. I need to. I need to Photoshop something now. <laughs> Get the sunglasses, like a white wig and just <laughs> supreme jacket. <laughs> oh, good! I found the one with Goku. <laughs> oh, disgusting! Fuck me. Yeah, sorry, Brandon. I swear that if you do Curse of Strahd, I'll take it seriously. But, oh, the urge to just be like, what if we just memed our way through Curse of Strahd super hard? <laughs> you can like, try. Oh. Just expect to make many, many, many <laughs> characters. You remember the the oh. meme I sent earlier was like how you want Curse of Strahd to go, and it's like a fucking no. Castlevania thing, and then it ends and... up being me and the boys fucking with Count Chocula. <laughs> and Luthier, and Luthier does have the two swords, and it, one is icing death, but the other one's Twinkie, and it's just two pastry knives. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm not even surprised by that comment. I pastry knife, sure. I ran The Witcher, and I was like, oh, okay, so here oh, they're locked up. And we're gonna have this tutorial fight where they learn how to stand in a circle and kick this poor dude to death. And then one of them's like, okay, so here's this knife that I just put aside. It's a cheese knife, it's dull, it's shitty, as like an improvised lockpick. And they're like, no, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna kill. All right, well, you're gonna have a penalty to hit and damage, blah, blah. Crit, 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 crit. Fuck. Oh my god. So I... they instantly kill the guy shoving a cheese knife into his fucking kidney. <laughs> And I'm like, well, there goes my tutorial fight. Uh, I guess the cheese knife is actually a magical artifact or something. <laughs> Fuck. Have we ever I mean, had a cheese knife to the kidney can't kill you? <laughs> Have we ever had a character legitimately die and stay dead in this in any of these uh, campaigns? I don't think we have. No, because we hate death. I mean, a vehicle. <laughs> partly, but we've had some characters get real close. Like Big Feller at the beginning had multiple close calls. Yeah, I saw. 
Zana uh, breathed many close. <laughs> like I, 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 I'm not gonna lie. Like you know, I do dread like my characters dying. I put a lot of thought into my characters, and you know, it ends up making me not want them to die. But at the same time, like you know, lethality is an important part of D and D. You know, it's it's a, uh, it, it it's what keeps it. You know, I mean, technically, I technically, Shiramong has a written out death. Like eventually, he retires out to like to live his, but. It's right, but kind like, of ne nebulous as to when that falls in the timeline. Not only that, I, but it's not only that, but it's explicitly. I think we said that he sealed his soul into the sword again. So, um, speaking of fatality, um, while I wouldn't run Death House if I were to run um, Fraud, because I mean, you, I'd I'd you mean the shit kill. out of Death House. So <laughs> good call. While I wouldn't run it, because I mean, you, you, we get it, we know it. Uh, the rest of it's gonna be plenty leaf as it is. That's fine. That's fine. Um, I, I was I'll make a serious character for a Curse of Strahd if that's what we want to do. Which I mean, if we're down. I, like... I I don't care if you meme. Just know mm. that the uh, inhabitants are sus sus as fuck. Sus among us. Look, I know. Everything I, that is not all right. Bad. We're playing Brandon, among we're playing am among us characters. You weren't there for the beginning of the beginning of Descent into Avernus when we all said, "Okay, we kind of want this to be slightly more serious." And then the first session, the first session, we had five guys within like thirty oh, minutes the, of us and starting. The, and the three Thinking about how skeletons. Thinking about how serious we wanted to it and the first wanted it to be and then the first thing that came to my mind is how we killed an entire baseball league or dragon heist when tyler but here's the thing that is written into the book okay they had a baseball league in the book and we Ooh. murdered every single <laughs> one of them we didn't play baseball. Well, we Titan just murdered them. Titan's like in the background, them. going no. It's literally meant to be. You walk out. the The skeleton is like, "Go find this thing for me." You find the guy who has it. He runs off into this baseball league, and you're supposed to play this big game of keep away. And, and then, then we just... just started blasting. Well, to be fair, it's red caps. They were gonna blast anyway. So sure. I mean. That was one of my favorite combats we've ever done because Kaja just got to go fucking ape shit in that fight. I remember I like nuked myself. That was incredible. My favorite moment from like fighting was when they forgot that they left the two characters that were temporarily evil in the car that has like <laughs> jaws that eat anything that run on run in front of them. <laughs> we just started taking out people like that really didn't need to be taken out, but you know. I really liked when Isaac was just trying to go around town and kill people. <laughs> they just kept getting the crap. <laughs> Hey, and listen, you know what? Yeah. We, 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 we have all these, like, funny haha -ha like memories, you know, from this. But at the same time, it ended up was, like, you know, one of our more serious, like, you know, ooh, camping. Because, like, I remember, like, I'll go back and listen to... Sometimes I go back to two specific moments in Descender and Avernus. And Descender and Avernus spoilers for Bragg, if you're listening. Um, but um, the two points I always go back to are whatever we are fighting over who gets to take the sword and oh my god no but that was really really good. it wasn't even funny it was like really really impactful because like you know everything about bebop was like you know I, the entire time i was like oh it's gotta be bebop right like bebop's gonna be yeah to bebop thought it was gonna be bebop too yeah right and Killed like tyke like that was <laughs> Pushed me out of the like, way. Drum of the liar, and he's like, "No, you're not, friend." Yeah, it's like everything about that. And then, like you know, Josh's beautiful monologue, by the way, at the end of everything, with um, with how everything ended up turning out. Like, I just I, I return to those all the time, just because I'm just like, oh man, like we we really did like pull together for some good stories in between, you know, private clicky, and uh, <laughs> I <laughs> love the uh, when you leave with the cars. And they're like, yeah, it's supposed to be like this cool, like, you know, um, Mad Max, Mad Max thing. And I was like, I have to give them biker jackets. Like, <laughs> I have to just dress them up as like a biker gang. But oh, like, man, um, God, yeah. Or... No, and then like, um, fucking in 
our our game in um in Icewind Dale was like some of the darkest shit we've done in the in like the group as a whole. Like, we really have come a long way as far as like vis a vis um you know like mature uh, storylines and everything. Even though you know we take time to meme every once in a minute. Um, Big feller was a sad motherfucker. Yeah, he was. It was great. Um, but this my is favorite. Just going to say my good favorite. Yet. Yeah, my favorite uh, ways to, ways to completely disregard the DM is Tyler when we started Dragon Heist. Guys, you're really gonna need to work together and play smart. Not you know, what do we do? Immediately draw sides and fight each other. <laughs> we did. That was the most chaotic party we have ever had in like the one campaign where we were like. Yo, we gotta buckle down. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get we work together. And immediately we were like, nah, that's not gonna work. <laughs> like, hey, listen, to your credit, to your credit, uh, despite the fact that Rush was in the Zenterum and <laughs> Gerald was in the Harpers, and both of y'all at some point knew this, <laughs> um... We just completely disregarded it for the sake of. Well, I oh, think it shit. was like uh, we're not so different, you and I, that kind of thing. Um, well, we knew each other before, and yeah, then uh, exactly, it just kind of happened, and then you know. Oh man, it went from there. I think it, uh, even though I know that like you know, Dragon Heist wasn't everything that like it could have been. I, I guess like I really, really enjoyed how our game of Dragon Heist came out. Jarlaxle won, and that's really the important part. Um. But not only that, it was just like, even if it was chaotic as hell, it was a good kind of chaotic that I really enjoyed. Um, I'm yeah, making, it was wild. It was a good time. I'm making an extremely cursed loot fear image right now. Um, Is there any other kind? Uh, <laughs> um, all in all, I am glad that, number one, we played that. I'm glad we're playing this, even though I said, like, you know, and um, I... I I did make it. I did mean to have it sound like I was like, "Ugh, I just don't like prepping this." Like, I really do. It's just, it's not my usual style of thing to do these episodic uh, little deals. You know what I mean? Um, I'm much more accustomed to games where it's like a long form plot that I, you know, am constantly monitoring, as opposed to just everything being episodic and stuff like that. But I think it's, I think it's coming out pretty good here, and I hope you guys are having fun. Um, yeah. And there, uh, let me see. What is the next one? There are three that I'm really, really excited for in this book. Um, the next one, I think, is possibly the best one in uh, mini adventure in this book. It's called A Deep and Creeping Darkness. So we're going to have two kind of like bummed out, kind of like creepy uh, mysteries in a row. But this one is actually a mystery. So it wins automatically. Um, number two. Uh, is not long after that one. I think it's the one after the one after Deep Creed and Darkness. It's called The Price of Beauty, which I really enjoy. And I think Arctos in particular is going to have a lot of fun with that one because of, uh, I'm not going to say too much, but I just, I remember him almost getting fucking insta-killed by the succubus in Forge of Fury. Um, and then there's one a little bit later called um, Candlekeep Deconstruction. And... It is quite possibly the most shitposty product I've ever seen Wizards of the Coast endorse, and I feel like it was made for us. Oh no. <laughs> so, like, boy howdy. Uh, so we're gonna see... How many, how many are left, I guess? Um, we have done the first three, so there are 14 left. I don't Goodness know... Great. I don't know if I'm going to do all of them, but I do want to do those three in particular. I also really want to do Lore of LaRue, even though I've heard it's not very yeah. good, because LaRue is my favorite um, Forgotten Realms deity. Well, um, I guess if you... It, once we start getting close, like four or five episodes, or four or five mm. sessions out, you might want to let us know, because we got to figure out what we're doing after this. Right, well... And if it is Curse of Strahd, then Brandon's gonna have time to get ready. Right, so let, let's let's talk about that real quick before we all dip, then. Um, so it sounds like we're all cool with doing Curse of Strahd after this. Is that everyone agrees? Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. Yeah. 
All right, then I guess we'll be doing so. And then I guess the question will be what we're doing after Cursor, because I I remember the idea was after Candlekeep we were gonna roll into the long uh, the long form thing. So now we have to figure out what the fuck to do about that. I guess. Well, I, um, I, is there another? I'm sure there'll be another book out in the next year, right? Well, like, I mean, there's another module that one of us can run. So I don't know if I'm going to be playing it anytime soon, but the other group that I'm in is looking at playing. Um, uh, la 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 la, the, the new circus module, um, Wild Beyond the Witchlight, and I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, oh, I don't even know what that module is, so. It's, it's a Feywild adventure. Ooh. Um, and I love me some Feywild stuff. So if that goes well and I end up really enjoying it, then I might try and run that for us as well. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, we big... probably just need to give Brandon a break if he's gonna do our long time. Right, thing, exactly. Maybe. Um, and we'll see. Yep. Cause um yeah, cause Curse of Strahd's a fucking big ask, and also like, I don't want to um yeah again don't want to make him do two in a row, but you know also I don't want to go immediately from Curse of Strahd into like the super longest thing we've ever done. Yeah, exactly. So what were you gonna say, Isaac? I didn't mean to cut you off, Doug. I was just uh, elaborating on the whole uh, Wild Beyond Witchlight. The big uh, meme behind that one. I wouldn't even call it a meme, but the big like hook that they say is that you it's the first module that you could technically beat without any combat i mean i said the same thing about dragon heist i mean we could say the same about ryan the frost main with that particular scroll <laughs> that's true you just end it no not allowed you, not my, not you my get forgotten one realms round of combat yet. right <laughs> not my forgotten realms you fuckers well, I mean, they're going towards a, they're moving towards the the multiverse setting. So we just do how many different Forgotten Realms are there parallel? Oh, uh, we can have a multiverse, but there's only one Lufir. <laughs> now, no, if we I... want to do Lufir explores the multiverse, <laughs> no Highlander Lufir. He just goes and kills all the other. Oh Lufir. my God! Can we do an April Fool's episode where we all play a different Lufir from a different <laughs> multiverse? <laughs> we'll have we'll have a Lufir in the multiverse of madness. Oh my oh, God! Uh, the thing, I just oh uh, man, God. <laughs> Jeez, I, I I have gotten a long term reliable D and D group with people that I enjoy being around, and I'll be goddamn if I let them escape from the Forgotten Realms. I've earned this, goddamn it. Um, uh, no, I'm serious. I'm could, just being could silly. you imagine? The oh problem is, is nothing would happen. They would all meet and like. <laughs> no. Also, I don't know great. the character too well because I wasn't there. So I'd be like, "Hello, I'm Luthier Dave. I'm what? just a fucking dude." But that would be. That would that'd be great though, because you could be the Luffier from the from the universe where he's not weird. <laughs> so, <laughs> Only the, one straight, straight man Luffier. <laughs> here's the here's the question: Do because I'm photoshopping um, a fucking supreme jacket Luffier <laughs> as Drist, do I put him in blackface? Do I shift his no! color to blue? No, no. Do I put him in purple no. face? Yes. No. You can give him a white wig, but please don't put my character in black face. I'll put him in purple face and see how it looks. Let's oh, see. Yes. No. Uh, also, I was going to say on the topic of like which games were serious versus not, I did not expect Theros to be particularly serious. I 100% go in, I was like, this is pretty much going to turn into JoJo, isn't it? <laughs> and we all started off with a whole did. bunch of meat men. I mean, it kind we... of did, but then yeah, again, we... it was also like... It's because, also... I mean... We also straight up just went, let's go bully some nerds. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I think Gallus was one of the most, like, um, straight-laced, most, like, uh, stoic characters I've ever played in D&D, &D, ever. Um, like, let's go beat up some motherfuckers, and then the other two chaotic motherfuckers are just like, <laughs> okay. I, uh, and then there was a uh, fucking... The, the philosophical debates that we were getting into. Like, we straight up got into some fucking philosophical, like, the nature of fate in that one. So I don't even know if that was, like, so also, much not serious. I saw the other day, Brandon, I didn't know that we could have literally made the gods weapons in that. That would have been really cool. We could have made the gods what? The, their weapons. So, like, Bi Thassa has, like, a Biden, and Erebos has a whip, and... Huh. Like, all the gods have a very specific weapon to them, and apparently you can just make them. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Also, I have finished with my dark deed. 
I would all like you to meet Loof Swag as soon as it finishes loading. Hell yes. Oh, God. I hate this. <laughs> <Mine's, laughs> mine's still loading. Oh, this is... It looks bad, and I would appreciate you to never do that again. Thank you. <laughs> Nerf swords or something else. Dude. I, I Why forgot... does he have hair out of oh, a L'Oreal no. commercial? Because <laughs> I mean, the, the Driss kind of has feel... hair out of a L'Oreal commercial, so... I mean, Luffy would definitely condition. <laughs> no, he. I'm sure he, Luffy doesn't know what conditioner is. No, no, no Luffy, Luffy doesn't Luffy know what shampoo is. No, All right, yeah, we're, Luffy, change, Luffy. we're changing that template. That template conditions knows what conditioner is. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Luffy's sitting there in the wooden bathtub, and he's like grumpily letting Cow Doggo fucking shampoo him with her little paws. Okay, <laughs> he's got the little like, like the some... horse brush. She's like. <laughs> oh, no. There's some people out there who have, like, gorgeous, beautiful hair, and you'll be like, hey, what do you use to wash your hair? And they're like, head and shoulder shampoo. And, like, you're like, conditioner? And they're like, no? Just like, fuck. How dare you? Yeah, that's me. I don't shampoo. Or I don't condition. I don't <laughs> shampoo. Um, yeah, I just head and shoulders, but I also have shitty hair that doesn't cooperate. Like, it looks like it's healthy and it's stuff. It's just I have so many cowlicks that I just can't do anything with it, so. Dude, me too. <laughs> I gave up. I'm gonna dip. All right, dude. Thanks for playing tonight. Thanks for hanging. Yeah. Because night boy, night. Night. about that time. <laughs> good night, failers. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging. That was a great yeah, time. Yeah, I'll see y'all well, later. Y'all have a good night. Oh, yeah. See y'all next night. week.